Uh, I joined Bosch, didn't she? Let's do some more Elden Ring. Yep. I just got to explore some more things in the gravesite plain. Lovely stuff. And that's a lot of runes. I wonder what I th might spend it on. Honestly, I should be upgrading those backhand blades. Those would be nice to have, and I... Oh, controller's all screwy. Need to change the configuration real quick. Come on. Is it still in switch mode from Splatoon? Okay, this should hopefully make it work. Hello, how are you doing? Hajime Mashtenshi. Having fun? Okay, here we are. I had to change my controller configuration real quick. So I... Backhand blades are right here. Wondering what I want to put on them, but I definitely want to level them up for the first time. But what what's the reason for that? Why are you on PC then? What particularly prompted this? So I want to go back and level up these backhand blades. They're basically the two Sorcerer Twin Blades from Dark Souls 3, which were a really, really good weapon. There aren't a lot of other paired weapons. Oh, okay. How is everyone else over there doing? What kind of salad is it? Presumably some kind of Italian salad. Oh, interesting. Huh. So tell me about Italian salads. Okay, so we only need... I don't need that many more runes for another level, but it's a question of what another level would give me as compared to other weapons and items. I... where is... Okay, this is at 25, which is good. It's not as strong as this thing, but it should have better weapon buffs. Lettuce, bread, and salad dressing. Huh. That sounds good. Wait, bread salad? You've mentioned this, haven't you? By the way, we need to buy more smithing stones. No, we need a... I wasn't talking to you, was I? I wasn't. Okay, we need six. We need one. Six. And two. We have a lot of the ancient dragon smithing stones. Well, I'm going to explore more around the gravesite point area. There was an offshoot that I didn't even know existed. Because it was on a ledge that I hadn't seen. Very, very Italian of you. How does that make you feel? Let's go smithing. Let's get smithing. So in that case, let's take our backhand blades and make them a bit better. Oh no, I'm stupid. I need I don't need six, I need twelve. Maybe I need to be put out to pasture. Okay. Right, right, because it's 12 of each type per upgrade level, so we'll have to spend a good amount of runes, but the DPS on that thing and the fact that they can be buffed very effectively is going to be nice. Well, I'm glad that being Italian makes you feel good about yourself. You should have a healthy, healthy level of pride. About being the country with the best cheese in the world, I would say. Would you agree? I bet you would agree. The best cheese is Italian cheese. But, either way, apparently the Minecraft server is shutting down for the time being. Because the only people playing on it anyway were Jack and Dom at the moment. Because I was taking a break and everyone else just completely lost interest other than them. And Jack's computer broke recently and he doesn't have a way to play it and he won't until next summer when he does an actual PC build. So, it'll be a while. But... Let's make these backhand blades nice and strong. Got some good scaling. I can use this as a nice weapon. Oh, I, I gotta buy seven and eight, that's right. Well, in the end, I could find other ways to play Minecraft. I could do something solo or find someone else. Do an adventure map or some sort of non-modded adventure. There are a few adventure map servers that I've heard of. 
and have some interest in. It's an idea. Yeah, that's expensive. It's okay. Forgive yourself, maybe, if it's justified. Hmm. Either way, I've got some good defensive talismans. It is rather nice. So let me go on and... Yep, actually level these back end blades all the way. And we should be chilling. It didn't even cost all that much, but we have so many basic ancient dragon smithing stones now. It's real nice. So main thing is, right now this is it. Well, there's an ash of war, but no actual infusion. This blind spot is its basic ash of war anyway. It's just always got blind spot, but you also found the blind spot ash of war on it. Blind spot's actually real good, too. I guess my question is... This has got 469. It's just worse in every way. 4675 and 487. So this is just the best option. Okay. What I like to see. So 487 DPS on this thing is quite nice. That is probably going to be my slashing weapon. The Great Catan is nice too, but... At least in terms of what I've run into, these enemies are fast enough that I would legitimately prefer to have a weapon that ke keeps me fast so I can afford to dodge away. Maybe. I would say probably. But as you can see, you two-hand this thing and get multiple. It's very, very nice. Very, very fast, too, and you need to lock onto an enemy. But you do this fun slash that moves you around. Yeah, it, it's silly-looking armor. I'll be able to get better heavy armor soon. Okay, so that curse blade over there, weak to slash. Very annoying enemy, frankly. wonder if we can backstab it. No, it sees me. That's actually vile. And I... Oh, well, okay. Not fun. But you can spam this. That's fun. Uh... Oh, what? Oh, what? Okay. I'm going a bit insane. But you can actually, maybe not stunlock stunlock it, but... It's a normal barrage of attacks seems to be a bit better. In most cases, I would say. Okay, in terms of item crafting, how many... Falfa? I've got one Falfoot. That said, there are... There is a better version of the Falfoot that you can find in... This area. If I went around killing Inquisitors... Should be able to get Golden Horn Tenders, which are just a better version of this. What I do want to test out, actually, real quick, is weapon buffs. Whether I get a stronger weapon buff off of Golden Order Seal or God Slayer Seal. Because God Slayer Seal should be my strongest pure faith casting seal right now. But... The small issue with that is, effectively, when you cast a weapon buff, even if you have a multi-scaling staff, it's only going to use your intelligence for the weapon buff if it's a sorcery buff, of which there is only one, just Scholar's Armament, or your faith for all the other ones, because those are seal buffs. So, basically, if you chop your number, chop your incant, subtract 100, divide by 2, and then add the 100 back, you get the scaling with just one stat. So this would be 213 with just faith, which is a little less than this, I would think. But I want to test that out, because right now on this... Also, the big veil over here. I wonder if Hoyo took some cues from this in making the Night Kingdom's veil. So that would be a turnaround time of about two and a half months. I'm not sure if that really makes sense. Because right now this is 633. 
Uh, this is 744. Switch the seal. And that's 751, so it is better. Not by a crazy amount, but still. Okay, I want to see how I'll do against that cursed blade now. Chopping him up. Either way. Yeah, that back ends. Let's get to dodging. Hi! Oh, okay. Luckily. Oh, okay. You can kind of stunlock them. It's different from a poise break, but that actually worked quite well. And damn, if this doesn't look hard. It's these bloody flaming dual wielded reverse grip swords. I like this. I really do. The coolest thing is how it provides this blood red effect on the slashes. Okay. So normally that isn't there. I want to see what it looks like with other buffs then real quick. Now this keeps me fast and since it's really fast multi-hits, you can get a lot of use out of the buff too. Let's put on other buffs and see what they all look like. Order's Blade. Black Flame Blade is interesting. It's fast with a really low duration though. Oh, Hajime Mashtenshi, Traveling Silver Dame. Thank you for the follow. Here to watch the Elden Ring. Doing a bit of testing real quick, but I will be continuing things for real soon. Nice to see ya. There's an armament. Then, Scholar's Armament for the test. And I guess we could try Poison. One that I don't have, because we have Fire, Magic... Lightning, holy. Poison armament should be the only weapon buff left to test. We got all seven, so we can just see what they all look like. I already tried Blood Flame. Let's see Electrify. So that it does for trails. That. Yeah, you get a little golden effect. Not as drastic. Okay, Order's Blade. I like how they've got different effects on them, too. But. This is going to be a great way to take enemies out. That's good, and real good fast. I still think Blood Flame looks the best. Okay, so we need a staff to apply this one. And I, for the sake of buffing, best staff option would probably be Academy Glintstone Staff, so I might like to go back and level that up real quick. Let's just try some of the rest of these out. Frozen Armament. This could actually be a good option as a way to apply Frost Ass. The issue is how I'd get rid of the Frost by putting some fire down. It's a different blue. A bit more vertically. And the poison. And now... Hmm. In terms of Diva, Frozen would definitely be best. It is interesting that there's no Rot Enchantment. Get rot bone grease and that's it. You have to settle. So, try that blood flame again to see what it looks like. It might be. And blood flame is still the flashiest by far. It's so good. Which makes sense because blood flame is just, in general, very, very good. Well, I don't know, you know, there, there was someone... I saw it on the internet talking about how all poison is either purple poison or green poison. Using a Calvin and Hobbes strip is sort of the base joke. Also, that's right, what I, another thing I should do is take up Bolt of Grand Sacks. Because I can actually use that instead of Lightning Spear now, because I do have 40 decks. In general, I should sort my weapons a little better. Make sure I don't have anything I don't need. Maybe I want to put Bloodhound Swing away, because I'm either using the Katana or the Backhand Blade. Yeah. Poison Hand doesn't need to be in here. Bloodhound's Claw is interesting for utility. This is a fun joke. I did use it against that one Ulcerated Tree Spirit. So in that case, we should take our 
Bolt of Grand Sacks back out and actually level the thing up too. Do I have a dagger? Yep, I've got a dagger. Is a Sacred Order bot weapon. Which means it's time to see how many somber stones I've got. And I've got one of each, so in that case, it's back to the smith one more time. There is nothing like micromanagement. That's what Souls is all about. <laughs> Micromanaging your build. And take both of Grand Sacks to maximum. Actually, maybe real quick, what I'd like to do is just see... This Ancient Lightning Spear compared to a basic Lightning Spear, just do a quick enemy test. And then see how much stronger it is when I actually take the thing to max. Okay, so if I go over to Gravesite Plane, and this over here, this Cliff Road Terminus, is a side of grace down around here. There's a ledge around here, a little cliffside path that's actually very hard to see. So I didn't find it until I stumbled upon it because the wiki said there'd be something there. So I didn't really stumble upon it at all. Never mind, maybe. Okay. So. Ancient Lightning Spear is like this. Looks real cool. You can also charge the thing. But either way, it skills entirely off of dexterity. As opposed to my spell skilling off of intelligence and faith. So I wonder which one is going to end up better in practice. 961. And, oh, my a grab attack is not great. More or less. Well, actually, what happened is I looked up a quest guide. I, oh, my, okay. Not good? Come on. Timing on that was evil. Okay, now we miss, apparently. Maybe the curse blade was not a good option to test this out on. Okay, and... That, uh, is that just 294? It looks like that. So I really do wonder what it's going to be like if I level it up all the way. Uh, yeah. This is tough. Okay. Let's horse back to the side of grace. Level this up. Because there is, unfortunately, a pretty big chance that it doesn't end up being better. But it's a legendary weapon, and I have somber stones to burn. Dwarf damage chest. It's gotta be 1,194, so it will charged. It still looks cool. You know who would like this weapon? Dom would like this weapon. He's really, really obsessed with anything lightning, because he, he really used to like Percy Jackson when he was younger. And he was all, oh, I'm a Zeus demigod. And it's like, yeah, sure you are, buddy. Okay, so see, weapon upgrade level only severely impacts damage of Ashes of War like these. Okay. Well, you know, every dog has his day. Maybe. Not that I'm calling him a dog or anything. So... Oh, red! Is that evening? Did something weird happen? I'd imagine it's because it's evening. Okay. Because there, there's a lightning spell in the magic mod that I was using in Dawncraft. And I basically left it for him. Okay, this is a good deal better. It's slow, though. Just in general. Yeah, it's more damage even at non-charge, though to be fair. Non-charge takes about as much time as a charge. Okay. Thanks. And... Oh, come on. Let's charge us up all the way, and... Yeah, this is a good option. I guess we'll just poke you. So, it... This is nice to have in my back pocket, then. That is nice knowledge to have. Other thing is, there were a couple things to check around here. This is where that lion dancer enemy boss was. I fought it last time, which was about three weeks ago at this point. Yeah, but that's the deal now. There's some NPCs to talk to, among other things. Oh, that's right. What I should also do is, like I said, go and level up the Academy Glintstone staff. 
That's gonna be... So I can use Lasats at base, which I cannot at the moment. Can't use that until 52 at base. The best staff in terms of buffs for intelligence, though to be fair, I don't really imagine I'll be using Scholar's Armament all that much, if at all. Because Scholar's Armament, it just adds magic damage, which is... The entire point of magic damage is basically... It's never the best or worst to compensate for the fact that if you're an intelligence build, a pure intelligence build, you're only getting access to magic damage and pure physical. But I guess, for the sake of completion, I suppose it wouldn't hurt to have it. Hmm. So Academy, Glintstone, Staff. What level I have? Since we've got so many runes at this point, and getting a single level costs so much, that leveling weapons just for the sake of it it might not be a good idea, but it's certainly not a harmful bad idea. It's just, what else am I going to spend them on? You know, given that everything I have is at 40 now, albeit with the great rune buff required. I'm hitting soft caps on pretty much every attacking stat. The only thing that really comes to mind is something I want more of is vigor, but the whole equal stats thing. It's not like I could really get vigor any farther ahead of anything else. Okay, so in that case, we will boost up that Academy Gwentstone staff and then actually explore the Land of Shadow a bit more. So, strengthen the Catalyst, Academy Gwentstone staff, okay. And that's going to take about 30 seconds of mashing through, as one does. I'm a real magician. A real magician, now. And that... Compared to my other staves, though to be fair, it's not as if I've leveled. Well, at this point, I guess I could level Prince of Deaths if I feel like actually using any sorceries for anything, which I'm not even sure I do. It's 193, this is 233, it's better. It's just better than Meteorite Staff, whose primary appeal is just... You might not be able to level it up at all, but you also don't have to level it up at all. There are some good spells in here. But... The big one is a spell that inflicts bleed and therefore scales off of arcane scaling staves, of which there are two. The better of which is, again, also in the DLC. Also, what's nice is... This weighs less than the meteorite staff. It weighs two-thirds as much, which isn't a crazy difference or margin, but it's still nice. So in that case, I guess I could keep Blood Flame Blade on, because it's always going to be good. Excuse me. Let's see the Urge Tree Golden Vow, and then... Suppose I can take every single defensive buff of note. It won't kill me. Finding Fortification. And then there's... Lord's Divine Fortification. It'd be nice if they were all in the same place. Especially... What's interesting is that this seems to be, and this is two fingers, this is Erd Tree. That's why it's a different. Because this is two fingers, these are Erd Tree Worship. Never say that they don't care about their lore. They made, they made the spells harder to harder to find because of the lore. I. I don't really have a set build, because this is all equal stats. I switch things up pretty much entirely for any given fight. Of course, I get a good amount of leverage out of things that have multi-scaling, like quality weapons, and, well, any spell I cast with Golden Order Seal. I haven't used sorceries much at all, just because magic damage is rarely ever all that good. But I could level a Prince of Death staff whenever I want to do it, so... Basically, I'm going with stuff that's fun and works. As you may or may not know, Black Flame got nerfed hard in DLC. It shreds 2.5% of any max health instead of 5%. So, which is why bleed is often a better option here. Pest threads could be good if I run into a golem. Or a dragon. But this covers all the buff types of serious note. I've got Grand Sacks for lightning damage. I guess the question is, not that Black Flame isn't as good. We have Pest threads as a ranged projectile. Magic projectile isn't really needed. I guess I could take something... Well, I've also got 
the hammer for holy. Even if that, but it's also got sacred blade on it because I was gonna say no projectile, literally sacred blade, which is a very good projectile to begin with. So, oh right, ten spells always starlight. That's right. It's been three weeks and I'm sleep deprived. I throughout the main game, I went through with, I basically tried to pick one heavy weapon of every single damage type. Ideally, one I could put Lion's Claw on, which wasn't true of Bloodhound's Fang. I used Bloodhound's Fang a lot from basically as soon as I could. And then I used various piercing swords like Stitcher, Great Epe, Bloody Helix. I ended up settling on Stitcher at the end in terms of thrusting swords. I'm trying to use new things in the DLC, so I'm probably going to try to find Mesmer's Soldier Spear and make it my new piercing weapon. Because it is arguably better than Epe 2 in terms of range and just damage scaling. So I've tried using the Great Katana and now Backhand Blade in instead of Bloodhound's Fang. Actually, during summer I was usually a lot less sleep deprived, but now I'm gainfully employed, quote unquote. Much to my chagrin. The only thing worse than unemployment is employment, after all. Okay, that's the charge. That's cool. But, seek you don't have the right, seek romp. We cannot go here yet, at all. This is an important place that we simply cannot go to. Seek fat coin purse. Why is always ranged a battle? Gorgeous view ahead. And... Wait, it does open. Wait, what? Okay, something is gonna stop me. Oh, nice! There are three, right? There's Milady, there's Leda's, and... Rolana? When I fight Rolana, which I'm actually kind of putting off as long as I can... To see how far I can get without going through Castle Ensis. But I don't want to skip to Shadowkeep, because that'll break a bunch of side quests. But... I want to see what I can do before Castle Ensis. And do as much as possible without going to Castle Ensis first. But Rolana's Twin Blades are almost certainly going to be real great for me, because they scale with every attacking stat other than Arcane. Though arguably Arcane isn't really much of an attacking stat to begin with. O Tower of ours hidden in shadow, a lofty spiral piercing the heavens. It's kind of spinning up. Lead him safely unto greater godhood, and in divinity grant our salvation. Because Mikkel is in there. Okay. Oh, we, I thought that was another ghost for a second. So player ghosts in our dialogue, and... This is going to be just like burning the Erd tree. I believe the church of the Bod is right over there. And as close as it seems... It's actually going to be a real pain to get to. But once we go there, we can burn away these thorns. It really is just like the Erd Tree, sealed and obscured by shadow. Tower of Shadow message. Oh, oh, have you found the upgraded Korean Greatsword? The Dragon Spiral Tower or Ends Castle? This is what's for the author's compatriots. Message left my needle left my needle later. Addressed to kindred spirits who also pursue Mikola's trail. The gate of divinity light is in the tower, sealed by shadow. That is surely where Pied Mikola is headed. We are no Empyreans, but we must locate the path that will lead us there. I will follow the crosses east. Okay, so Ents Castle. That's fair. I really do find it interesting that they're going straight to Kalos. Instead of making a Legends Unova. I think in part... They've probably realized how much nostalgic value... That everything Unova related holds for people who are currently interested and invested in the Pokemon series. And are sort of just, I don't want to screw it up. I don't want to screw it up. And they might be trying to sort of cook more and perfect the Legends formula before they make a Legends Unova. I will say, though it is kind of mitigated by the fact that most older Pokemon games aren't really available much anymore. I like that... They aren't just making cheap remakes, especially given how controversial <sighs> Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl ended up being. Well, it's not unfair, given that part of the reason they're doing it is probably to make sure that when they make it, it ends up being good. Because they know a lot of people are going to be looking at that one and expecting a lot out of it. 
Which I'm fine with as a result. So there's the horn scent grand dam in here. And okay, we can actually we can't stun him all that well. But we can deal damage very, very quickly. Hello. Two, three, four, I Oh, we went under his blade. That so that frightens me. I've thought about doing Pokemon fan games on stream. The big one is Insurgents, because it's one I've wanted to play for a while, personally. Oh, that's unlocked. Okay, the Jumping Heavies would work for stun, but I'm not trying to stun these guys. I, I think all of us know about piracy. The question is moral compunctions. So let's see what a backstab is like with these things. That's simple enough. Okay, Spiral Incantations. I love these weapons so much. It's so good to have. So good to have Celsor Twin Blades back. Thing is, we can talk to her now, especially if we're wearing the Divine Beast head. It's the Horn Scent Grandam, or Grandma. Uh -huh. Okay, so she's just not saying anything. She presumably exerted herself to summon the Dancing Lion versus us, and yep, Divine Beast head, Ritual Headwear, Form of Divine Beast head, used to perform the Lion Dance. Oh, nice! So what specifically have you tried and enjoyed? In the form of a divine beast head, you used to perform the lion dance. Worn by the very finest of the sculpted keepers, alas, it no longer responds. The old woman's earnest prayer, divine indication, heightens intensity of the storm. So storm skills and spells alongside strength and dexterity, but reduces the restorative effect of drinking from the flask of sacred tears. Focus is also troubled by wearing this headwear. Hmm. But that just means a low focus stat. So if we put that on, we get new dialogue from her. Oh, interesting. Any recommendations? Oh? It's got horns on her eyes, like an omen. Such a joy to smell the scent again, the scent of the divine mind. Oh, so presumably she can't see because of the horns, so she can fall for us, sculpted keeper stand before me. Oh. Felt the sacred beast essence fade, a great anxiety welled up within. So it's all sort of magical sense and smell. I heard that a lot of manga sites got taken down recently. Woman, I mean, her foolish tears. I don't mean sites, I mean shows, though. Of the mind. So sort of stuck with her thoughts? Or... Gracious arrival? Yeah, so she can't tell. Oh, this is sad. So we did destroy the line. I wouldn't say kill is the right word, because... Presumably they were basically golems that sculpted keepers. Let's see another hat over there too. My son. It's gonna be ashes or exterminatus. <laughs> it's a funny way to describe it. Vengeance. It's mesmer. Oh, Watchful Spirit. Okay, this is a spell. It's really, really bad, though. Let me see. You may not know this, but Exterminatus is a term from Warhammer 40k, which basically refer refers to when a planet is fully consumed by chaos demons, the space marines nuke the planet from space so hard that it splits apart. But... There are really no good guys in that setting. The, the humanity faction is literally just the worst, the least evil. The, you're welcome. Translated from Geek. Warhammer lore, both fantasy and 40k, is really, really cool. And my dad actually played Warhammer Fantasy for a while, and I used to follow him around when I was younger. He doesn't play it anymore for various reasons, but it's... As someone who isn't a painter... The miniatures part was always beyond my can, but the war was always real cool. Don't worry, we're not going to force it out of you. I'm not the Inquisition. Guardian spirit over the caster, above the caster's head. An entreaty received from the Hornset Grandum. Summon a guardian spirit above the caster's head. The spirit never strays far from the caster, conjuring several apparitions before dissipating. Take vengeance upon Mesmer and his lot. They who betrayed us, I, they who burned us. Let them face and thy wrath their just deserts. But... 
Okay, so she's basically can't chanting her summoning prayer from the start of the boss fight anyway. Oh, I'm just keep saying that. Well, that will. There are Inquisitors in this DLC. I'm actually gonna go farm them in just a second. America's Val Progeny. Hmm. Interesting. Sculpted people channel thy color, thy anger. It's resplendent of dances. Song I will sing in service to thee. Okay. Well, also, what if I take this off? She say anything else now, or? So, maybe because the smell is on us, she still thinks we're the sculpted keeper, so to speak. But either way, this is where we're going now. Maybe I... Oh! Is in... In the fantasy sense or the 40k sense? Chaos Warrior, Chaos Marine. There are actually a lot of 40k games now. And some of them do look pretty cool. There was one that came out recently called Bolt Gun, I believe. Oh, okay, fair enough. It, it is the same Emperor, at least, so... Continuity makes some sense. Well, same Chaos Gods, too. But as I was saying, there was one that came out recently called Bolt Gun that was basically a sort of boomer shooter in the style of Doom. Just very, very fast-paced and crazy. And that looked cool. Okay, but these guys should occasionally drop. I wonder how well a buff would work on this thing. We can have to slash. I think they drop golden horn tenders. Yeah, it is real cool. Maybe I could put on Black Flame Blade. Big thing is that they drop a better version of the Gold Falfy. In theory, at least. Oh, so they actually fight a bit like... The women from Profaned Capital. I didn't even think about that, but that candlestick spray is very much the same. Especially since I'm pretty sure that one of the Inquisitor bosses... The one boss Inquisitor, Jory, is specifically a woman, too. I want to put on some item drop increasing equipment real quick to see if they drop a horn tender. Because Wiki says that they drop it, but I'm not quite sure. In that case, I think Outer God Talisman. We don't have that yet. We have America's Sword Seal. It's still medium load. We've got a bit more arcane. Let's put on Silver Scarab and see if that makes any difference. If they drop something, that would be real nice. Oh, have fun. It has been many long years since I last shot Firehood. Firewood, back when I was in Scouts, I think. And to be fair, I was not very good at it. Have fun. All I'll say is, dedication is a virtue. Loyalty is a virtue. It may be one of the greatest of virtues. Okay. Let's see if we can get a one-hit kill if we... Yep, jump attack is a one-hit kill. Why specifically? Chauvinism? Oh my goodness, this jump attack is great. I feel like a... Brutal assassin. Okay, that... They might not drop it then. It doesn't seem like they do. So in that case, let's put stuff back on. Put my actual gear back on, which would be... Physical Talisman. And... Great Jars of Arsenal, I think. Depending on how much difference that makes. Medium wood, if I take this off, that... Yeah, that does make the difference between medium and heavy, so we'll keep that on. Should get some light and... Is that a Blood Fiend over there? I think it is. A Blood Fiend at least, and... that a That's just a squirrel. A possible weapon. Do they think that you would fight? That you would fight someone? Either way... Blood Fiends are gonna go down to this. Hello! I missed entirely. Oh my goodness. There we are. Very weak to holy. Which, with a sacred infusion, this weapon deals a very nice amount of. It's 
Red flesh mushroom. So one of those blood fiends is going to eventually drop. A blood fiend's arm is a weapon, which is a weapon formed from the arm of another blood fiend. Torn off. Which, again, for lack of a better term, metal. Very metal. Can I get this? That's just a flight pinning that time, sad. Any items over here? I think this might actually lead down to... The Dragon Mountain. Don't quote me on that. One... Two, easy enough to stance break. Goodbye. How many more blood fiends are around here? Hmm. Let's just check. Yeah, yeah! The mountain that you can kind of see over there is Jagged Peak, and that's where Bale is. So there's a decent chance that I might be able to at least get to the mountain. But it's big enough that I'm not sure I'd be able to climb it. We'll see. Oh, that's why you had that mechanical dragon. Okay. That is very in character for you. I'm not sure what else we could expect. Now that's a bad thing, because it isn't, but it's very you. Gyo. So what is in here? What am I walking onto? Okay, those are just turtles, are they? I think. Didn't get what? Come on. Bird, bird. Another flight pinion? Okay. This is just more revered spirit ash, which is only helping my horse. That's okay. Is someone gonna invade me around here, or... Strip of white flash. Dog ahead. Alright. Actually, maybe... Sacred Void on them, and... They were easy enough to stun with that jump attack. We may as well just do one more jump attack instead of going through the lengthy cutscene. It's fun to see, but eventually get tired of it. Oh, oh, they're gonna teach you, Yu-Gi-Oh! Does this mean they were gonna... Are you gonna try to convince me to play Yu-Gi-Oh now? That wouldn't be the worst thing. I do know some people who like it, at least a little. I guess my question would be... Would that mean you would want to play against me? Because Yu-Gi-Oh! versus viewers, if done right with enough people to make it interesting, could be real fun. But you need the people for it. Welcome back. I I'm glad to hear that you're still with us. Okay, the range on that is time. I, I said, would you want me to? And I guess the answer seems to be yes. But it's more that... It would probably be playing against viewers. So like I said, there need to be people who would be actually interested in it. Hopefully. But, like I said, you need to have the demand for it. And, okay, Blood Cloud, that's funky. Hit and, okay, that one has... No, that's not the arm, that's some kind of spear. Come on. Hit. And another one. There we go. Cool. This way to do this might be putting just Blessing of the Urchery back on. Maybe. When are you going to drop your arm? Threaten people know what? Playing Yu-Gi-Oh? With you? With me? Both? Neither? Hmm. You know, I, I know it is the Land of Shadow, but it's dark. Who are you going to threaten, the lesbians? Big thing is, this guy is not hostile, and if we kill him, we'll get problems. Talk to you, and we get the Forger Brood Cookbook, and- Oh, fireflies. We kill them, we get invaded. Forger Brood Cookbook. Record of cracking techniques left by the non-human Forger Brood, shared out of kindness towards Moore and his kin. Glad the knowledge craft the following fireproof pickle deliver. That said, if we did kill him and get invaded... We could get the one armor set that is arguably better than the goat set. Pretty quickly. And easily. And now they're larval too, but again, I don't use any of them. But... It would also mean the other non-hostile ki kindred of rot would stop showing up and we wouldn't be able to get their cookbooks. 
Oh, okay. Well, it's just teach me Italian or something. I don't know. It could work. And another big hit. Fun stuff. Alright. So, then... Some kind of church over here. Let's see a set of grace, though, is the thing. Let's put our straw light back on. Thank you. That might be enough. If we put our cards correctly, pun intended, it could work. So there's a furnace golem down there. Hmm. Let me see. Who else is around here? It might be more board fiends. This is Prospect Town. Who do I hear? Another board fiend? Okay, what's going on though? Come on. Hit! It's just sad that I don't get to see the second part of the repast. Oh well. As if the first hit kills, the second hit is not going to show. Mm hmm. But Prospect Town. What are the prospects of the town? You tell me. But I would imagine more blood fiends would be around here because they seem to be coming out of here from somewhere. Well, well they are pear shaped, but saying boiled specifically is a choice. Alright. Come and get it. What do I see? We see you. It's actually, can we get a backstab? Let's see. We can! They're human enough to backstab. Humanoid enough to backstab. Nice. And the Sacred Blade will kill, and is that a... We sneak up, maybe. Let's fully charge that heavy. Oh, wow. Okay. And we still don't get to see the full damage off that. It is nice that we can take advantage of their holy weakness, but it... Kind of makes, makes things a bit anticlimactic. It is interesting that... Even in a place totally absent of Moog and his ilk, you have these blood-affiliated enemies. Bean-shaped. You feeling gassy or something? Don't answer that question, please. Okay, I shouldn't have asked that. If we go up top here, I wonder if there's going to be a boss here or something? This is weirdly constrained in terms of direction. Forcing me on a path, but I wonder what their intentions are with that. But I can get on the horse here. Hmm. What is all going to be in the area? White flesh mushroom. Squirrel. Well, it... I gotta figure out my, my value offering. <clears throat> gotta figure out what makes me me and what makes me appealing. I'm not sure that one's been done before, so if it works, it works. But I think going around down this way, I think we can go jump down this coffin, maybe? This should be Cerulean Coast, I think. I think. We'll see. So, nothing to do but to keep hopping up. Anything to find a niche. But you didn't, a you didn't answer the question. Though given the way all these other questions get answered, I can presume that the answer is really, really bad. Probably. It's sad, you know. What is this? Is this another church or...? I really do wonder what this place is. Tummy ache streamer. Well, streamer for people with tummy aches. Not a streamer with tummy aches of their own. It's different. So... Well, I told you not to in the sense that... If it's gonna be bad news, I'm not gonna put you through the humiliation of delivering the bad news. That leaves me to think that yes, it would be bad news. So let's put on all this stuff to buff up. Black Flames Protection would be good here. Okay. And here we are. 
Lots of blood fiends and... Is that a buff? Looks like a buff and... Oh my goodness, these guys are strong. Okay. Huh. One. Two. Nice. Got our golden vow up. Dodge. Match jump dodge that, which is nice. Okay. I... I feel like God needs to give you a break. Let's do that. Oh, they have Blood Boom. That's funky. Okay. Slam. Okay. Luckily, the damage isn't crazy. Oh, they got Blood Flame Lacerations, too? Okay. Funky. Okay. One. Two. And... Is that one already dead or not? Well, it. they tried. They couldn't manage it, though. That's... There we go. Now we have the Blood Fiend's Arm. And this is... Really, really nice. It's a very good... Bludgeoning weapon. And it has very, very good... Blood Wasp build up. This is the Sacred Bloody Flesh. Raw Meat Soak the Blood. A delicacy of the Blood Fiends. Temporarily boosts physical attack power and arcane when Blood Wasp appears nearby. So it's like Word of Blood's Excitation. Further boosts attack power. Blood is said to have fallen from the formless mother's wound. Never will it dry. Never will it rot. And weapon used by the blood fiends, an arm pulled from the corpse of one of their kin and wielded as a makeshift weapon, having been sanctified by a blood ritual. This armament is capable of spraying blood stored within when executing a strong attack. It's good with a lion's claw or with crag blade. You want to put a blood infusion on it. The main thing is that it has a really crazy AoE. It's nowhere near as heavy, which is nice. When you do a fully charge attack, you get that little blood AoE, which procs a bunch of blood loss. Even though it doesn't say that there's any blood loss on the weapon. But the big thing is that each one counts as it has a bunch of little hitboxes for the spray. Welcome back! How was the wood? I just took down a huge mob of blood fiends and got the blood fiends arm. Which is going to replace giant crusher for me for now. Oh, nice! So, what in particular have you been trying to make? If anything. Any project projects in the pipeline, or...? Hmm. Wait, it was real good to get those blood fiends down. Keep this holy hammer on. We're gonna scroll down there. That should be Cerulean Coast, I think. Which should eventually be the way to... Fail, I believe. Come on, come on. Let me see. Go up here. Wonder where the other illusory walls in the DLC are. They're supposed to be an okay amount, but they were in those burned ruins down in Maine. Gravesite Plain. That's where I found some of those. Other than that. Question is, what's in there? Wonder if it's a boss or not. What is this item? Oh, that's cute. That's cute. So you're working together. You're making up for each other's weaknesses. A lesser person would call that codependency. But I'm toxic. I think code. I think codependency is good. Or at least can be. Maybe. Sometimes. So what's in here? What is in this area? Oh, just a skull. It is pretty. But it's interesting that there's nothing outside because there was a bit of sort of placeholder terrain in the lands between. Oh, okay, so we got a chest in here. So what's our reward for travail going to be? The answer is... Oh, the Outer God Heirloom, so that's going to further boost Arcane. Use that for farming, presumably. A talisman engraved. A Damascus sword is... a basically bandit steel that has graphite inclusions that give it these sort of black and white zebra stripe patterns. What is interesting is... People believe, though... There's some controversy as to whether we know how Damascus Steel is actually made. Because either... 
it was lost and rediscovered, or the technique was lost and an approximation was made. But they're very, very old swords, at least in their original form. <clears throat> the clan who lost everything in the Great Fires peered upon the corpse of their ancestor, normally an act of sanctity, and saw in its shadow a twisted deity. The clan had suffered such torment that the horrible thing was taken as an object of worship. It... I don't quote me on this, but I'm not sure whether Damascus Steel is really purely a Damascus thing. It's kind of like how... The country known today as Macedonia is not the same as the Macedonia that Alexander the Great is from. Because one is a region of Greece and the other is basically Eastern Europe. Oh no, oh no, she's dying. First, first streamer to do CPR on a viewer or something. Well, frankly, we'd be too far away. We just have to mourn your death. This is literally so sad. Can we get five likes in chat? It! Alexander is... A very interesting guy, historically, for a number of reasons. And one of them is just that everyone liked him so much in terms of cultures that they all try to sort of take him as their own. From Damascus? That's still cool. Because there are both... Christian legends and collected Islamic legends, whose entire idea is basically, oh, you know Alexander the Great, the guy who was very blindly a pagan and literally claimed to be the son of Zeus? No, he was actually a monotheist, and conveniently the type of monotheist that we are. Because they couldn't square the circle thinking he was basically the coolest guy ever, and also thinking he was a pagan. Which is interesting, though to be fair, it was more of a later day thing in terms of various... Christian and Muslim writers basically trying to incorporate various forms of Greek and Roman philosophy and thought into their own systems without having to say, oh, they were basically us all along, so to speak. For example, um, there was a guy in... I don't want to just assume Baghdad... Though, to be fair, Baghdad was the seat of a lot of Muslim philosophy. Oh, so... Well, it... Well, what is interesting with the Cyrus situation, and... Because what I presume you're referring to is the fact that the Torah is in the Old Testament slash the Jewish scriptures refer to Cyrus as... The, as a messiah, which is notably different from saying the messiah... Because in the original Jewish context, Messiah was just a term that was given to basically anyone who was anointed, quote-unquote, by God, chosen by, chosen by God. And the word literally just means, in a very literal sense, excuse me, just anointed. So it wasn't necessarily them saying that Cyrus was sort of an honorary Jew as much as them saying, oh, he was a pretty great dude. Who, in this case, did something so good that we think that the hand of the divine was involved. And, which is very, very different from the way that Christians tend to use the term, which, to be fair, it's very complicated and very fraught to talk about it. But, there's a lot of sort of biblical context... That gets lost in interpretation by a lot of Christians when I've heard them talk. That comes from what I would personally interpret. And some people who I've read and talked to would also tend to agree. You know, trying to see it as more of a departure from the other religion than it actually is. Because it's one thing to say to someone who has a very different religion... To you that, oh, we basically have the same religion, because that usually leads to basically saying, oh, when we disagree, that means you need to agree with me and change your ways. And that's dangerous. And another thing to say that we have some degree of common heritage and therefore some methods of interpretation typically associated with the other group are things that maybe, maybe saying take and use is the wrong term, but you know, there, there could be some learning by way of comparison. And... 
I think that leads to a lot of, like I said, stuff like Cyrus being called a messiah. Which is very different from saying the messiah. Because there's a lot of historical context in the term that needs to be understood. If you want to know what was going on there. And in my personal opinion, when I read about religion and read about theology, the best writers are ones who understand historical context. And generally, and I mean this not in a dismissive or cruel way, because it is a legitimate difference of opinion. But th there was something I read in one of my religion classes. It was an article put out by one of the popes, and ironically, one of the more conservative popes, who basically said, the one way you're not allowed to basically interpret the Bible from a scholarly Catholic perspective is a purely literal perspective. You can't just look at the page and say, you can interpret this without historical context. Because it doesn't make sense without historical context. Because even if you say, as quote-unquote a religious person would, that, you know, quote-unquote, this book is inspired by God. And that can mean a lot of very, very different things. You always have to qualify it, you know, well, you know, most people who are serious about religious scholarship would say, even if they were personally religious themselves, they would be willing to qualify by saying this is something that was, you know, had human influence. It was divinely inspired or influenced, but through human hands, human viewpoints. And that, again, it's a very complicated debate. Par partial, yeah. Specifically, I was talking about how the sort of medieval Catholic scholasticism, which in the con context of Elden Ring, is quite literally what the whole Golden Order fundamentalism thing was based on. And the fact that this seal, which is also the best seal in the game, which I like, scales equally off of intelligent intelligence and faith, explicitly says that fundamentalism is scholarship in all but name, scales intel incantations using both intelligence and faith, Essentially, that the very logical approach that scholars like Aquinas took to the analysis of religion, their ideas about essentially morality, the meaning of the world. And that is not to say that I particularly like the way that Aquinas interprets a lot of things. And I think it's important to square things in their context. Like I said, you know, historical context is very, very important that... When, when you look into a lot of early Christian writings, whether you're a Christian or otherwise, one thing that often tends to st stick out, especially given the way that the modern church tries to talk about other religions, especially Judaism, largely in light of certain unfortunate events occurring in the 20th century, is that there is a lot of text that sounds and quite honestly is to an extent, anti-Semitic. And that's something you need to reckon with. But that's also the importance of historical contextualization, because without the ability to interpret things in context, you either have to say, we have to throw everything out, or you have to say, bigotry is good. And for someone who wants to be both a tolerant and respectful person, and someone who wants to take religion seriously, or at least see what it has to offer without dismissing it on its face, Neither of those are really places you can really start. Both of those are pure non-starters. But Aquinas, and of course, like I said, you have to contextualize it, has a certain deal with that. I read a bit of Pascal, who in addition to being the inventor of a lot of material science, because if you're familiar with the unit of Pascal's to measure atmospheric pressure, well... Well, the Pascal is a unit measuring base atmospheric pressure, and the Pascal is just a way to measure pressure in general. He was also a religious scholar. And it, it's very, very interesting to think about history in the sense that there are a lot of people who were simultaneously very religious and very intellectual. And in addition to people like Pascal, one of the big, big ones who typically comes up would be Isaac Newton. And I think... In a similar way, people often talk about how there are a lot of true Renaissance men back in history 
people who are the foremost of multiple fields at once. And one thing you have to remember when you talk about that is just... There was a lot less knowledge going around in general. And most people who could afford to really just get smart... ...had money or resources either through inheritance or patronage... ...that they could afford to just do that. That was their day job. So... It's not necessarily the best position to compare yourself to, so to speak. For a number of reasons. But what, what is very interesting, like I was saying, the idea of religious studies as a form of intellectual scholarship is that it leads to... Well, like I was saying, Pascal also has some unfortunate opinions on Judaism in a religious sense, but... Unfortunately, it was unfortunately normal. But as I was saying, as I was saying... One thing that I think is important with considering scholarship in that way is that... It leads to the idea of morality as something that can be reasoned out. Which... Oftentimes, does not immediately make sense to a lot of people these days. But, in my experience and opinion, it's the only real way to sort of sy systematize morality in a way that isn't... Well, to make moral decisions in a consistent way that doesn't end up being inhuman and monstrous. That some level of consistency, or at least an attempt at it, is very important in terms of doing the right thing. And consistently attempting to do the right thing. Because there, there are writers, there's a guy named Jonathan Haidt, he says a lot of things. Not all of them that I agree with, but one thing he talks about often is the idea of moral instincts. Sort of more, and one of them that he talks about often is disgust. Essentially that oftentimes... Even with logic, a lot of moral decisions can be based on gut feelings, and one of the biggest gut feelings you can have, in addition to fear, is disgust. But if you don't interrogate it and you don't try to remain consistent, it's very, very easy to turn that into something that ends up, for lack of a better term, monstrous. Because if you just accept the idea that, okay, disgust is my moral instinct, I'm going to base things around disgust without really interrogating it, or trying to make it harmonize with other principles, you can get into really nasty situations like thinking, like saying, oh, I think X is ugly, and therefore being, e being mean to, say, burn victims, which on its face is horrible. You know, no person of sound mind would say, you know, such and such, we should mistreat people because they're ugly. Which is exactly why the idea of sort of beauty is so that poison and morality is inherently fraught. And something that in instinctively makes me tense up whenever I hear anyone trying to talk about that idea. Of sort of, you know, truth is beauty, etc. Even if it does make for good poetry. Because one of the poems that I read for one of my college classes was... I believe it was... It was Keats... Ode on a Grecian urn. And the final line of it was, if I recall correctly, Truth is beauty, and beauty truth, that is all. I'm paraphrasing badly at that. And sure, it, it goes hard as a line. But even a single second of thought should make you question it at least a little. But... And in light of that, there's a lot of old literature that needs to be understood in a somewhat similar way. And the big one that comes to mind in terms of sort of logic and morality is being very, very highly connected. Especially since, and again, I mean this solely as a descriptor, oftentimes these days, when people talk about sort of logic, quote-unquote, well, to be fair, I wouldn't say that's as true anymore, necessarily. 
Back in the 2000s, which to be fair, this one are basically an eternity ago. If someone was talking about logic, oftentimes they would be presenting it as something sort of Nietzschean Ubermensch in nature in the sense of, you know, good and evil are just sort of made up concepts. And if you're logical, you do what you want for your own self-interest, which, even if you don't accept the idea of morality, generally speaking, just pursuing your own self-interest and nothing else is not necessarily going to be a good idea, because what well, is in naked self-interest is all that does in the end is make people hate you. And in the end, they just gang up and kill you. And that generally is not good for your self-interest, I would say. But, as I was saying... Back in high school, kind of on a lark, because it was really just, uh, maybe not necessarily beyond my counter level, but it wasn't something I was as prepared for as I thought I would be or wanted to be. But we got to choose a book, any book to read for a project, and I chose Milton's Paradise Lost. And one of the interesting things about it, and part of it was, though I actually read it before, it, if I recall correctly, it was the year before I had to read Frankenstein for another class. But Frankenstein famously quotes a little bit of Paradise Lost when the monster is interrogating the doctor. And one interesting thing that stuck out a bit to me at the time, though I didn't give it that much thought, it was just sort of a passing remark that I didn't. Interrogate all that much. Blossoms underground the shadows, underground gravesites, and voices struck by lightning. Underground gravesites, yellow fulgur bloom. Yellow flower that crackles with lightning, material used for crafting items, and be with yellow lightning's essence. It's just a better version of the regular fulgur bloom. What is this? Oh, you're clipping. Greater potentates cookbook, and that's... Oh, a hefty lightning bot. Okay. See, oh, and now they... Who is attacking me? That was funky. Here, let me see. Check out that pot real quick. Hefty lightning pot. Cocktail, capacious crack pot. Cocktail of fulminating materials sealed inside. But as I was saying... Uh, one thing that stood out to me in a very interesting way... Is that... When... Adam in Paradise Lost, after eating the fruit of knowledge of good and evil, has a bit of discourse with the angel. I forget which one, I'm a fake fan. But they talk about sort of human capacity for logic, and one of the things they specifically mention, the primary thing they mention, is basically the ability to sort of follow moral commandments as sort of the essence, the example of logic, which was very interesting and surprising to me as someone who didn't have a lot of knowledge of sort of older concepts of morality, of religion, of reason is connected to morality. It, it was very, very interesting. But as I went on and studied various other philosophies and things, it did come to mind a bit more. It was interesting. By the way, we've gone through this interesting thunder forest. Suppose, can I quiff horse up here? I wanna see. Nice, we can do that. And okay, that's you. We've already talked to you, right? Yeah, we've already talked to you. Let's get that real quick. That silly broken rune. Not great for much of anything, but it's there. Allow me to simply move on. Alright. Let me move on up. What else is around here? It's birds. Okay. Let's got this ledge here. It's interesting. Some house up here and that church down there, but we will probably want to whip around there to get that way. Hmm. Much to think about. Come on. And flight pinion. 
I wonder when the next boss encounter is going to be, actually. Gone a while completely without. It's still fun. Getting some interesting exploration in it. Oh, is this some kind of warthog? Okay. Well, it's nice to have good damage here. Come on. We got poop. How nice. So in that case, continue on our merry way. Avoid those warthogs, I guess. I guess we could drop straight down there. Don't imagine the damage would kill me. Oh, it's, it's a bear bear. I, oh, okay. Red bear. Warthog. Come on. I. Let's put our blood flame on this. It's not a rune bear, but it's tough enough that I would probably like to take you down. And Oh, we got blood loss. And the DPS on that is rather nice. It, we really are so bad in terms of two-handed, dual-wielded, curved swords that you can enchant for pretty high DPS. Main thing is, dry leaf seal in the DLC will give me slightly better enchantments, but it's hard to say how useful it would be. Let's see what happens. Hmm. Come on, come on, come on. Check this out. Okay, so what's that shack over there? That's my question. And this is a thin beast bones. I wonder how that thing died. Whatever. Got our starlight and... Okay, we got another artist. What is this? This looks to be, maybe, incursion painting. Let's see. Maybe that? Maybe. It's that bridge over there, but that bridge, it's a slope. It might be somewhere over here. I'm not quite sure. I feel like Shadow Keep, maybe? Gotta find something that slopes up that much. Hmm. But I wonder what the rewards from the paintings would even be. Maybe spells and talismans? We haven't found any of the DLC paintings at all yet, so it's tough to get a standard for comparison. Hmm. Either way, we should drop down. Have a circle back to the start. Get in that church, which should have more Shadow Tree Blessing fragments, I would presume. See what happens. So, so, go down through here. What else is okay? So that Cerulean Coast seems to be around, but if I can drop down, there is another question entirely. Hmm. Oh. How do I? Coffin supposed to be around here. But it's also way far down. Can't actually get there and oh that was almost a fall to the death. That would not have been fun. I haven't died yet this session, but I also haven't fought any bosses yet. So Oh I okay. Curse blade. Alright. Was not expecting you to show up. Thank you. Let's put on some fun buffs. Golden Vow is good. I guess Black Flame is good too, and Blood Flame, sure. Okay, and... Blood Flame, I... Okay. Thanks. I... Alright. Two. Two, three, four. Okay. Dodge. One, two, three, four, five, six, and... Anything that allows me to just ignore... Their mechanics is a good way to do things. Just gotta tank them through and burst them down. I love paired weapons. It's a shame there aren't more of them here. This. Could just run through and whip around to get down there, but... I would say that stuff down here 
But oh, this area past the bridge. Go there before going to Castle Ensis over here. I think this is Castle. This has got to be Castle Ensis, right? Well, we'll see. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that that should be Cerulean Coast, but can I get down here now? I think I can get down here before Ensis, but it might be through a different way. Not quite sure. Either way. Yeah, there's a black knight in here. Given where these other churches have been. Church of Benediction. Blessed Blue Dew Talisman and that Slay Restores FP. Oh, that thing is actually really, really good. Talisman depicting the Blessed Boon that is a drop with the Blue Luminescent Sap of the Earth Tree. And that's just Crimson Dew, but still health, it's FP. And that's actually quite good. Some people say it's actually the best talisman in the game now. Post DLC. But I... I have to focus on defense. I really do. Drop down here. Both Seeker Knights. Home and... Oh, and the Pada. That Impaling Thrust. Seeker Knights swing about like a fist using the manner of a straight sword. Composed of a linear double-sided blade attached to a substantial guard wielded by the Oath Seeker Knights. So Armin, Song of Balakafist, using the Knight of Restraint Sword. Secret Knight Helm, black with gold ornamentation. These knights set off on quests of discovery, hoping to find by themselves both of their own choosing to serve in perfect lifelong, lifelong devotion. I wonder if we'll find one of those guys. I bet one of them might be in one of those jails. I bet. There was no Shadow Tree Fragment here, though. That's what really surprises me. Hmm. Gonna get to a point soon where I'm going to have to teleport to get back. That one wedge I dropped down, what well, wanted to drop down, looks like there's going to be a drop down somewhere here. So, nothing to do but keep going. Good stuff. What's around here? Hmm. How is this going? In rune. In ruin. Okay, and this is just right over the starting point. Okay. So suppose the entire point of this area was more or less to loop around uh, the start, and that's where it ends, so. Getting to Cerulean Coast, though, was a very different question in that context. I just want to see any other. Items or some such around here, then. Because in that case, this is just some familiar head, therefore, time for turn back. Yep, I. The only thing would have been the Oath Keeper Knight armor, then. Okay. Okay. So, this is just evening. I do like this very pretty blood red, blood red. Drop down that other ledge we saw before and check out this side of the bridge then. I guess that really is the only thing left that comes to mind. This could lead me down to here. What did I mark it this way? Oh, that was right, that artist shack painting. I mean the non-artist shack painting, so I should probably mark this now. Just to notate that I haven't actually gotten the painting there. But Bloodfiend's arm is good. So things in the DLC are fast enough. Probably want to focus on weapons that are also themselves fast. It's an idea. We'll see. Oh, hello. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So they just drop Folger Bloom sometimes. Let's go ahead and try out that ledge. Cannot imagine that anything of serious note will be on it, but can at least be consistent and check everything. 
Okay, that goes down there. It's sort of a staircase. Okay. Cool. Alright. Those are just gray birds now. Suppose I'll... Oh, hello there. Hammer, then, is all I want to do with this. Definitely just do a silly plunge on them. Okay, cool. And, well, we got one. And, of course, the undead bonus is good enough that taking them out is actually no problem at all. Big thing is to me, the Pada should be a decent option. For a, it's a fist, so it should be a two-handed piercing weapon. It's new, too. So that's 143. Closest point of comparison would probably be the guitar. Let's check. 143. Melee armaments. Fists. That's only 136. So, splits are not good. Also, split. So I think the ca the pot is probably just a better version of the guitar. It's funny how in the base game we got a cipher pata, and then the DLC adds just a normal pata that otherwise is not extant or available. So in that case, I got a couple of blood fiends and then the pata too. Pot of two e. Hmm. Oh my goodness, this thing is comically long. Okay, I should test that out in comparison to the guitar first, then, just to see. Hmm. That standard and Pierce. A two-handed. Hmm. Let's see how the guitar's move set is in comparison then. And what hits do standard as compared to thrust? Let's be able to switch out my weapons and frankly given the speed of the saw. And fast weapons is a nice idea. If the guitar is real short ranged. It's got a similar move set, but Mod shorter range. Hmm. Ooh, that's nice. Well, it, if the violence is doing you good, I'm content with continuing to do violence. Okay, so the guitar is, yeah, it's tiny. That, that's fine. You can even hear the delay in comparison when they strike the ground. All right. Actually, maybe. But these are very, very long reaching fist weapons. Hmm. One thing is, these are standard attacks. Get a thrust. I don't know. Piercing strong attack is actually standard, but jumping. I feel like jumping with this is going to be a good option for me then. Let's actually just level that up then. So, a paired weapon and a new paired weapon and a new heavy weapon for every damage type of real note then. Fair enough. It's just... It's big long needles hanging off my hands. That's just fun. I like that. It'll be a while until we can get the strike equivalent that I want to use, which would just be the unarmed... the unarmed style. But it'll be nice when we do. Okay. We'll have one of these again. We have so many ancient dragon smithing stones. I am not in any hurry. Alright. Okay, 
these are definitely a limiting factor, though, but we get a good amount of runes from everything we do at this point. So in that case, going to go level these things up and keep using them. How nice. Okay. All right. Level these up. Bit stronger than the guitar, it seems, and I would imagine that quality is going to be my best option, especially since I can't two-hand them. A pretty even scaling. That might change at higher levels. So it's got slightly better deck scaling. Very, very slightly. Let's just war on this, and... Let's just see. Pilling Thrust is still what I want, I would say. Probably need to do a duplication then. Yeah. Pilling Thrust, sure. Ashes of War, Pada, and Pilling Thrust. Yeah. Wait. Pilling Thrust. How did I duplicate that? What gives? Did I not? I feel like I'm going crazy. Shore sure, duplication. Healing thrust. Let's just see. Do I need to close back out first? I bet I need to close it out to make it get recognized, or... Wait. Oh, or is Impaling Thrust just not compatible? That's actually a much funnier option, then. In the sense that to have Impaling Thrust on this, I would need to not equip anything to it because Impaling Thrust is only usable on thrusting armaments, which supposedly excludes those fists. Okay. <laughs> Well, that's certainly an idea. Hmm. Storm Stomp. 496. No, 396. 414. Less than 400. Also less than 400. So we've reached the point where quality is almost always going to be better on any given thing. Quality Pata with... <sighs> Honestly, I feel like Raptor or the Mist could actually be an okay option. But... It's very limited here. Actually... Bloodhound Step. Go with Bloodhound Step and just stay dodgy. It's something that actually would be useful in this. So... The only place to really go now here is the bridge itself. Fun. Who could I test my piercing on? Well, actually, there's going to be a bunch of Mesmer soldiers around here. So, suppose we can go on our funny bridge now. And head over there. Oh, nice. Should get a few more of those cold and fireflies. No, oh, bridge is over there. Okay. I, right, right, should check if we can get some Spirit Ash Blessing first to make the horse a bit more durable. Don't want the horse to die. Shutter Run Blessing. Can't do that. Not enough. Oh, still not enough. Okay. I didn't really check. So it's time for the bridge, the crosswoman, the shooting at me, and seeing how well this potter does. It's gonna be fun. Sad, of course, as I s saying. Oh, that great bridge. No dragon ahead. Oh, Dark Souls 1 reference. Well, actually, technically, Demon Souls reference it was the first to actually do the whole dragon bridge thing. Just got copied repeatedly and intensely after that. 
Hi there, hello. Two. Ooh, explosion. Nice. I wonder how much a better jumping attack would be. Oh, come on. Oh, please. And... Ooh, nice. This is real good. But I feel like a talisman that specifically supports this place, that would help it even more. Thanks, and... Can I... What is faster? Well, the fastest thing is just you getting killed by an explosion. That is true. So, let's simply take you down this way. Well, the running attack is always going to be piercing. That's... Probably use the standard running attack then. Comes out real fast too. Come on, get down here. Get down. Okay. Unless I miss. Mm. Well, I didn't have enough time moving to actually start it up fully. Come on. Kill the ballista. It'd be funny if these things had health bars too. Even if you couldn't lock onto them. That could be nice. That is Castle Front. Oh, I actually got that grace. Didn't remember doing that. Hmm. Seems to be on the other side. I wonder what I could find over here. This is probably a mausoleum. Go in there and fight somebody. Hmm. Who all is around here? But I just want to see... Even having standard damage instead of piercing at times by way of using standard attack instead of the jumping attack. Oh, you know, I didn't even think to check whether those corpses would bleed when I hit them. That is certainly something. You guys are real weak to lightning. Let's take advantage of that weakness. That's heavy load. Okay. Oh, come on. Oh, my goodness. Come on. And... Nice! And as you get back up... Oh, well, shielded is fine, too. Okay, and... We even preempted you! Oh, goodness, okay. Come on. Mm. Yeah, I think... As interesting as the running attack, it's not as good. All the Grand Sacks, maybe I could just keep it in hand all the time for the sake of actually using... It is a lightning projectile and just a good projectile option in general, but I don't know. Because it's so heavy, too. Oh, come on. Please. Oh, right! You got Mesmer Soldier Spear, though. So there's a chance you drop it, and that is actually the best great spear in the game. At least in terms of best thing that can be infused with Ashes of War, because the only other Great Spear that can even be infused is Great Lance, which is not all that good. Okay. Oh, okay, we gotcha. <sighs> Sweep is nice. It's got good range for its speed, and therefore good speed for its range, but it's not perfect by any means. Hmm. So way to get foul feet is nice though. Even if that does not work. I didn't think that would have worked with the birds though. Blood fiend over there, which means holy. But again, it's the question is who I use Blood Fiend's arm on. Gotta switch back to holy. Hmm. Bird hunting with hand swords. Where is... Blood Fiend's over there. Let's put our hammer back on. Alright. Well, I could just put... Giant Crusher away. That is true. Hello. Given that... Okay, so the projectile deals enough stance damage, too. That a single other jumping attack will... Knock down. Okay. Definitely... Clear out some of the spots in my inventory. Clear some of the weapons I'm not going to be using out. This guy's over there. Again, it is kind of a question of... 
What is up over this way? So when I went through this area a bit, I went down here. I found way into this dungeon. I couldn't get could get up here if I took the high road, presumably. Also looks a bit like a mausoleum. I think this might not be a mausoleum. This almost certainly is. At least some kind of dungeon. It is very, very interesting that the mausoleums serve a very similar role to the Everjails. Especially since it's literally just one is physical and the other is literally a pocket dimension. Which, there is an explicit statement that magic in the Land of Shadow took a very different line of development. And it's interesting to see that kind of in practice. Hi. And you're very unlockable. Thank you. Hi. One, two. Uh, most of those attacks are not even piercing. Which makes them a poor substitute for something like Draining Twin Spears, which had one standard hit at the start of the combo back in Dark Souls 3. But everything after that was thrusting, and to be fair, there were enough big enemies who were very pure weak. The main thing is that I used them against Medir. And against Medir, it was not that much of an issue because you would have to more or less run in to even hit him in the first place. That. Oh, interesting. You can go in this water. I would never have expected that. Well, that's fun. Obviously that waterfall was certain death, but... What might be here? Just silver fireflies. Gold would be nice, but... It's not in the cards, it seems. And no cave ahead, therefore time for sadness. But... I guess it was cool for them to make this possible, but... So I would appreciate something being here, especially since I can feel my frame rate tanking. It's all this particle effects. I saw, and I guess I could get Jack to let me steal his PS5 for a bit or something, but and though I don't necessarily entirely agree, especially since honestly, as much as I love From Software. They are not especially good programmers, and one of the places it shows through is their games not generally being optimized all that well. But, there were some video clips I saw of Astrobot for the PS5, the new sort of Mario Galaxy type platformer. And, one interesting thing about it is that it looked real pretty, but most of what it used the PS5's frankly gratuitous amount of processing power for was very interesting complicated physics effects and just having lots of particles and lots of physics objects on field basically just to show they could which is fun and respectable it's pure pierce and actually a decent amount of stance hmm. i wonder if this is faster than going at it Honestly, yeah, I think the jump attacks are faster than it would be just spamming. Those are Soldier Greaves. Serve Mesmer of the Impaler, Rest and Crest and Filth from fighting an unending war. Gauntlets of the rank of battle soldiers and Mesmer's armory, common soldier gauntlets, picture two quins it, which like the inner faces of the men who wore them. So do they mean the faces inside the armor or just... They're black-hearted. Black Powerfly, and again, that's Mesmer's. Oh, somebody is chucking firebombs at me. How nice. Hmm. Get up here. That horse would do it. Maybe. Come on. There we- Oh, my goodness. Hate this. I guess I could equip a talisman and increase fire res right now. I don't feel like it. Huh. Over there to the other side. That's a horse moment. That is a job for a horse. That's presumably just Castle Ensis proper? Getting up there is tough then. Goodbye. Goodbye. And to get in there, I'd have to come from the actual castle, presumably, so. Hmm. Or if I don't, I don't exactly see what my route is right now. 
actually down here. I don't see someone, but I heard something get up. Let's use that lock on to see if we find anyone. Hmm. Time for revenge. Well, really not all that long time spent then. So what is down here? This... What can I find? Okay. Either way, that's not the hill. Hmm. How am I going to get on that bridge? There should go to some other kind of dungeon, presumably. Bridge up there. I don't know how I'd get to it. It's not a bridge as much as a scaffold. Again, I don't know how I would get to it. Hmm. Guess from over here, then? Over there would probably work. The other side of that hill. Let's just keep moving. Hmm. Rod of fruit. Not that I care. Not worth slowing down for. So what is this? What is this going to be? I didn't even think this would be a path. I have seen... Taking glances at the full map. It has been shown to me. In various forms for various reasons, but... It's very different from knowing where things connect. So the verticality of a land of shadow map is crazy, and... More generally... It makes it rather... Complicated to actually get places, so to speak. I have to find... Ways down without being able to just drop down and glide. It, it's pretty open world, but it's not purely a go everywhere, anywhere, whenever you feel like it game. Hmm. And that's a Rosa statue, but it does not seem to be active, which raises the question of, okay, what is up with this place? Also, we don't have a map right now. Hmm. Definitely makes navigation a bit harder. So I could put another marker right here. See if I can get a map, maybe? Maybe. I feel like any second, given how foggy this is, I'm liable to just fall off an edge and die. Probably a lot more truth to that than I'm like to admit. Hello. Oh, but that's... Never mind, I thought for a second. Saw that it was pot, I forgot that I didn't have backhand blades up, but... I want to find my way to whatever that... Wherever that map fragment is. That said, I don't think we'll be able to. So this is... Some other dungeon. Tell me all about it. The Fog Rift Catacombs. Oh, this is one I've heard about, and I... Let me see. Fog Rift Catacombs. Boss is... Black Knight Commander Andreas. Hmm. Boss is a Death Knight. Is weak to holy, actually. Well, that's a surprise to me. Huh. Lightning, found standing guard. Does it do death blight? It doesn't seem to do death blight. Huh. Well, I will mark this as a place I need to go. It said maybe I want to get that side of grace first. Imagine there has to be a side of grace in here somewhere. Go back up. But we can't teleport at the moment. Let's mark this. Come back. It's... <sighs> Boutique is not the right word, but it's, it's self-contained enough. Especially given the teleport that I can just come back whenever I feel like I'm in a better position to do it. Because I don't want to rest and respawn everything. That's the big deal. Let's switch back to... Backhand blades for the moment. Okay. Starlight back on. 
what is all here? This foggy wooded area that very plainly is not something I can get on the map at the moment. It is interesting to me that the map fragment boundaries align rather imperfectly with the actual playable areas connected. And I imagine that, you know, that's something they would have had to choose. They did a bit of that with Forbidden Lands, in that you had to go all the way up to mountaintops to actually get the map of Forbidden Lands, which you have to go through to get to mountaintops and roll with in the first place. But, didn't have the same level of commitment. As just, yeah, casually, you can go to this foggy forest area with a dungeon that you might want to go to pretty early on. Can go to pretty early on, but you're going to have to loop around to get to this spot if you want that map fragment. And I I don't think I can drop down here to there. Pretty sure I have to loop around this whole way from... I think there's a Shadow Altus. Land of Shadow is smaller than Elden Ring. It's not that much smaller, though. Well, Land of Shadow is smaller than the lands between. DLC is smaller than base game. But not by all that much. And you can just totally... Oh, come on. Let me do this. So it's, it doesn't go from a one hit to a two hit to a one hit. But you can just spam that. It's fast enough, but meaty enough to actually stun lock. Especially since those dudes are tiny, tiny. Oh, but... Did the fog lift because we killed them? I guess that would make sense. Who knows? It would certainly make sense. Mm -mm. That... That's the bear we killed earlier. Anything else over here? Well, this is presumably the... Fog Rift of oh, Fog Rift Catacombs. It might just be an area thing. The area you're in of the Fog Rift determines whether or not you're gonna get. Oh, hedged in by the fog, but we should go back now. Take out. Whatever's in and up here. See if we can drop down there, see if we can go on those bridges, see what this is. Then work my back around these tents. Maybe all the way down here. It's relatively self-contained, because I want to do that camp all at once, and if I rest at this castle front, it's basically going to cut it in half. Much to think about. Actually, not all that much to think about. A little bit to think about. A, a rather manageable amount of things to think about. Hmm. That's just a broken rune. Broken the mediocre way, not the overpowered way. So soldiers up there. Gonna have to loop around to get them, presumably. That's fine. Here's this pot of jumping heavies. It's an interesting way to do things. That makes me think maybe I actually want to just farm that Mesmer Soldier Spear and use it as my piercing weapon. Actually, never mind. Okay, so presumably to get up here at all, you need to come from up here. From Castle Ensis. Or at least from up here, drop your way down. That's song. That's certainly something. Hmm. So I suppose it's just working my way back through the encampment now. Which I was going to do eventually anyway. I don't see any ladders. No spirit springs. No nothing. Getting close to that waterfall and you can feel things lagging. Okay. Go way back. But... Our light back on. I like how subtle the golden highlights on Bullgoat armor are. 
Precisely because it's easy to forget about them and then just notice them again and think, oh yeah, that's cool. Totally forget until you notice them again. And I Okay. Can I... Right. Oh, I got the chance. And I did not mean to knock you off. Can I... Oh, come on. I thought it was jumping. There we go. Thank you. Hit. Hit. There we are. It doesn't look like they dropped anything, but I'm not sure I'd be able to see. Because presumably, that's a loaded in. Yeah, exactly. Eternal sunshine of the spotless mind or whatever. There's bats over there. I'm gonna use lightning on them. It's the name of a movie I haven't watched. By the way. With nothing to chance, see how much it does with it. Boy charge versus a normal tap, and the normal tap does enough damage. Okay. How many more bats? Any more bats? Don't see any more bats. But seems to be some kind of dungeon. No item ahead try right. What is that? They really, really do reward poking around like a nosy little ferret. I like that. Get another boss and another little dungeon. Okay. Some of this. What is this? It's a back entrance to the castle. Jumping or jumping, precious item ahead. Now, where have we found ourselves? Certainly interesting. It's just some kind of storeroom then. Spell Drake Talisman plus three. That's quite good. Boosts magic damage negation by the utmost. Beast horn. Hunting horn beasts of the realm of shadow. Once suffused with spirituality, material use for crafting items. Found by hunting horn beasts of the realm of shadow. The crucible has a particularly strong influence on the beasts of the realm of shadow, causing many to grow horns despite the characteristics of their species. Hmm. But that spell drake talisman, large depiction of a blue ancient dragon, boosts magic damage negation by the utmost. That's just better than the plus two that we currently have, which is three smaller dragons, the others were two smaller dragons, and one smaller dragon. It's basically the same as the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman. Because it's also a rectangular shield instead of a Stereotypical shield shape, I guess. Not even sure how I would describe that gun in my head. It's not a trapezoid and it's not an ellipsis. It's a pointed arch shape or something? Who knows? Not me. I never lost control. Well, actually, I did lose control. That's the problem. Okay. Thank you. Slam. And we were on to a will of a level to actually get that repost, and that's okay. Let's fully charge this. Nice! And how much is this gonna do? Oh, wow! That repost is full HP. In damage. We're actually going back to the encampment now. We do have that catacombs to go through. Go through the encampment, work my way down to this spot, and then do at least those catacombs. Some other dungeons, but the catacombs come to mind. Especially since I'd want to work my way down. Question is, do I do the river first, or do I do the spot up here first? This is... That's definitely going to be for tomorrow either way. Given how painstaking I've been. Also, I don't need this anymore. Can't go there. Hmm. Hmm. The way we can put the pata back on to take on those soldiers. There we are, quality pata. Have more soldiers, and we're doing this by two handing and going for heavy jump attacks. Because it's pure pierce, the normal attacks. We're actually mostly standard damage, which is not what we want here at all. 
That's not a grace. There is the start of the castle. But of course, well, I guess we can mark this, though, to be fair. Unless we go around one way, which would also go around the castle, which would also break a ridiculous amount of quests. We have to go through. That is where Rolani is, too, and I would hate to miss that fight, even if I was not actively going to for every single boss fight, which I am. If you're not doing an all-bosses run, are you even really playing the game? Well, you are. I'm just being mean and gatekeeping. It's the first step to Gaslight Girl Boss. No, it's the second. It's the second step. I'm unworthy. So... Checked inside most of these tents. Hi there. Oh, burning dog. Okay. Well, we got dog too. <laughs> that took all of that. Is that a reference to something? Is that something I'm not getting right now? It's just... Is it something Italian? That's the real question. Now it... I wish I could call myself a dog person. I've just had bad experiences with specific dogs. Well, like I said, there, there was... That one neighbor dog who I really, really liked. And then he died. Oh, oh, I know. Don't worry, I was just referencing the fact that we have dog discourse every day. As in a person who likes dogs or someone who has little doggy ears and eats from a bowl. Record of crafting techniques left by the Fire Knights to serve Mesmer the Empowered. It heals the art of wielding fire for the benefits of soldiers setting out to join the crusade. Or the knowledge to craft the following fire coil. And that's actually a very useful item, too. Fire coil is a very viable source of damage, even in comparison to spells. It's not a throwing pot, it's a consumable? Not a throwing pot. Oh, right here, but I don't have the embers yet. It's FP to conjure tiny fire snakes, a device of fire used by Mesmer soldiers. Lingering embers bundled into a coil. I actually have a couple that I picked up. It's FP to conjure tiny fire snakes from the spot that is thrown. The writhing snakes pursue foes. Fire is a symbol of the crusade. Even Mesmer's making belt soldiers a real bit, yada yada. But, it appears as if I cannot afford to not check inside a tent. <laughs> Some of them do have stuff in them. I hate it here. But like, like I said before, that is always the sort of dichotomy. If every single spot... And to be fair, that doesn't change the fact that a lot of things are what we're just... Here is your 20th Arterio Leaf. Oh, Ember and Mesmer from there. Oh, interesting. So it's mostly Shadow Altus, but... So you can find some in the camp. But it's cool when there are a bunch of unique rewards. But it also means that you as a developer need to be okay with the potential players missing out on things that are truly unique. Which takes a lot of courage as a developer, I would say. Oh, so someone came back to actually man the ballista again. That's funny. Break that table just to be mean. Anything new in here? Nope, not that I see. Take that guy out and go for the other half of the camp. Bypass this, which means we should probably put down a marker. Work my way down into here. That would... It's just a little more self-contained, because it terminates at a group of blood fiends that I fought a while ago. Terminates with this dungeon. This leads down to the river. And also, well, this leads down to this poison pool, which eventually... That leads down to the river. It sort of spirals, spirals around, more or less. And I... How did you come back? I didn't rest or anything. Hmm. Come on. You're dead. Hmm. But... But... Check inside the other tents. Oh well. Come on, get down. Oh, we're, we're gonna be swarmed now. Set up. Oh, alright. Not great. Oh, and a perfumer. 
Oh, you're kidding. I don't like this at all. Well, time for hell. Come on. I, oh, oh, thanks. Oh my goodness. Come on. Ooh, ooh. Stomp is not great. I... One more... Okay, I... Oh my... What? What? I hate these perfumers. And there were three of them. Okay, that means... For one, that's a rune arc I need to pop. I need to... Target them first. And I'm, oh, but... We activated that, so even if we didn't rest there, we... And of course we can't travel from here. This is legitimately infuriating. <laughs> it's legitimately really stupid. Okay. Luckily, we do have more arcane from that talisman now, so... Put Scar Seal along with Outer God Talisman and then Item Drop Chance, and that would... Boost my Autumn Drop Chance to pretty great levels if I had to farm something. But now, I have to go out in order to teleport. Stupid. Okay. Okay. Figure out how to target those perfumers and take them down first. What I should have really done was just put up a buff before that group fight. I did not need to be as foolhardy as I was. Big Knight over there, putting everyone on alert is my worst enemy right now. So let's getcha. Hmm. Common soldier gauntlets, hello. Oh, a common soldier. I was actually close to a one tap, but not quite. Hmm. But it's the kind of thing that needs serious buffing. Those guys are still alive, but suppose in the end there's no real problem with clearing out half of the encampment at once and then the other half. It's not how I like to do things. Well, it can buff now. Why not? Blessing. Vow. Probably flame protected me. These perfumes were among the worst of it. Alright. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Nice. Slash, 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 slash. Okay. Cool. So all three of those awful perfumers gone, so... Perfumer Sarong. It's a bunch of dudes now, but the important thing is no perfumers. Okay. Hi. Oh well. Now that is... Pretty- Oh! That- Golden Bell does not make that a one-tap. Okay, I- What in the- Alright. I- Oh! There was another perfumer too. I hate that. Dodge. Thank you. Come on. Nice. Okay. This is infuriating. Common Soldier Helm. Same description, more or less. And a chest. I think I saw a chest somewhere. Yep, right here. And this is... The Fire Spark Perfume Bottle. Okay. It's an interesting weapon, but it's only got deck scaling. There's a Frenzy Flame Perfume Bottle that scales up everything but Arcane. Get that eventually, and that would be good. Deals more damage at base with the stats I have compared to Fire Spark. Also deals magic, but that actually means nothing. Perfume Bottle will be made into a weapon by Perfumers of their own shadow. Text release Perfume Parter, producing sparks of fire. The Crusade was a violent purge, and the Perfumers were not called there to heal. All right. Good for them, I guess. Hmm. What do I see? Either way, next time I die, go I need to go farming with... Oh, there was an item just on the bridge. I didn't notice. Hello. Shuttle Realm Rune 1. Okay. Fair enough. 
Let's just see what is in all of these. Tense, if anything. Who knows? I really don't. Mm -hmm. Okay. Doesn't look like much, if of anything, if anything. Can proceed to the other side. Little systematic sweep. I need to check. Drop down, presumably without dying. Should be safe. A couple more soldiers. Is that marking that? It's a fallen branch. Okay. See if there's that ledge up there. Part around the castle. Use that little wooden emplacement as our sign of where to avoid right now and leave for later. It's another fire dog. Okay. Cool. Let's run in with a... That did not work as well as I wanted or expected. Okay. Jump. Jump. Okay. Nice. Two smithing stone fours. Not bad. Let's check what's inside of these tents then. That was a shadow tree fragment, presumably. That also I presumably already got. Thank you. Where is everyone? Broken rune. That does not open up to anything. Yep, no entrance. Hmm. Anything here? Or... I think you can clip the camera in, but... Wait, let me see. That's actually got something in it. You can't get in here, but you can clip the camera in. You can even break... What's inside? No, you can't get in that one. So let me see. I click the camera to one of those, it's totally inaccessible. You can clip the camera inside, but there's nothing in it. And of course you can't break anything inside if there is nothing inside to break. No items in here, it seems. No item in here, it seems. Okay. Come on. So anything up over on this part of the waterfall or not? This is above that spot we got to before. Thank you. Oh! I didn't think you'd run away. I was wrong. Slice up a few more birds. Again, it... They're a lot quicker to flee than I would imagine. Anything here? Probably not. Okay. Over up top, that entire plateau is completely devoid of anything, which is still really funny. It's a big gateway to belly ramp, basically. Whoa. So we got this, which means we can work our way down southeast to that side of Grace. Probably go back to Fog Rift Catacombs. Get everything in there. It'll be a decent way to spend my remaining time. Come on. Okay. Jump. Jump. Jumps over that, which is nice, because you do get some iframes. One, two, three. It's actually good and fast. But in terms of pure damage... The double jumping attacks are better. Even though you have to jump, it's... It's fall down holding them. The fists are certainly not. Any kind of speed issue there. Especially since... The heavy weapon jump attacks. Even if in theory they come out about as quickly. So you're still falling at roughly the same speed. Have a good amount of and lag. Just to say a bad amount of and lag for me. Okay. Another dog. 
Another soldier. Okay. Thanks. And one. All right. Two, three, four. Okay. Let's go to blitz the dog then. I suppose I could work my way all the way over to Runeforge Lava and Tank. There's also a set of grace. I could just do two little dungeons in a row, maybe. But it's interesting how dungeoning is kind of a it's very easy to cut off and compartmentalize from the rest of the game because of the teleports and given that you can get regeneration of flats by way of killing groups of enemies without having to actually go in and rest at a side of grace can often be incentivized. I certainly felt incentivized to just go for as long as possible without actually resting so that enemies stay gone. For the sake of easing exploration. Don't have any AoE here. Alright. I uh, guess I just have to run up on them. Or what I should really just be doing is using. Alabaster Lord's pull. That is true. You know, Blessing and Golden Vow. It's Golden Vow is cheap enough. I have no reason not to apply before any combat encounter or even slight note. All I'm doing is shooting myself in the foot by not doing it. Oh, okay. That, oh, wow. All right. I expect that. Okay. Jump, jump. I Man, just sort of accidentally duck under that by going low. Hi there. Hello. One, two. Okay. That's your soldier's axe. A weapon weapon used by the soldiers who serve Mesmer the Impaler is still axe worn with use. Favorite of those who lost themselves utterly in their Lord's War. Capable of performing powerful charge attacks. Charge at axe. Spread crossbow. Modified crossbow made by combining two crossbows into one, capable of loading multiple bolts and firing them simultaneously, enabling a spread of fire. That ought to be a spread of crossbow bolts. But what do I know? Hmm. Could take out those blood fiends, find the other side of grace, work my way over to lava intake, and do those couple of dungeons which I would say should probably get me to the end of things time wise. And then I guess more gra even more graveside plane would be tomorrow. So I'd still be exploring things that would be classified as graveside plane, at least by me. Okay. Hello there. Blood fiends and soldiers, there are more soldiers than blood fiends, so I'm fighting the blood fiends. Okay. Alright. Alright. Hit. I right. Okay. Panic dodge still works. Another jumping attack. Actually, just a normal heavy works too for the stun. So, yeah, we focus on the guy who is more of a threat to us. Actually, neither of them are really threats to me, I would say. Can I... One. Two. Three, four. Actually, they are remarkably easy to stagger. You would think that given how large they are, it would be more difficult. But, I suppose not. I would not consider myself the type to look a gift horse in the mouth, so we'll take that. Oh, but wait, that's not a set of grace. That's Elk River Cave. I didn't even mouse over it. This one is down here. Okay. So, I suppose, once we get to lava intake, we'll have to sort of ride back around. Or we could keep going through here until we reach Alak River Cave again, because we already have a teleport here, and this is a recipe for overextending myself. But, that's what makes this all so fun. Now I'm the priority, because, well... I'm dealing a bit more damage than they are, I would say. 
do more damage to the blood fiends than the soldiers are. Okay. So it's fully charged, this heavy. Nice. Oh, well, that tossed you. It's kind of ridiculous. Okay. Other fully charged. Thank you. Hit. And that's death. But they're just very weak to holy damage. Which is good for me. I oh my goodness. Okay. Hit. Oh, but we don't have Sacred Blade on right now. That's fine. That's fine. Doesn't actually make that much of a way of difference in terms of damage now. So I'll just switch to Alabaster Lord Sword. And use this before they fly away. Try to get a few more pinions. Instead of having to do an actual deliberate farming run and they all fall down. Well, it was a valiant effort. There is a group over there. If I sneak up on them, I don't think they should just slide right off the cliff. Hopefully. You really never know with these things. Okay. Let's try this again. Got big range. This should be good for me. And, yep, I got them all, but I... Every single... Every single one? That... Bothers me. In a real way. Well, let's put our Starlight back on. Can't use Blessing, though, to be fair. It... There is no reason to conserve FP in a game where you get all your FP back every time you rest at a side of grace. It's just... If I can have a buff active, I should. And if I start running out, that means... That does not mean buff less. It means just actually go to the side of grace. Alright. So... Let's see... Go down around there, but this is, of course, Run Forge Lava Intake. Which we will get to eventually. Oh, it's daytime now. We've been at this so long that the entire cycle has progressed. Now that's what you call thorough exploration. That's what you call not resting at a side of grace for a very prolonged period of time. So, I would like to, now that I've killed everyone and everything here. Work my way through this poison pool. I think there are basilisks there. Work my way back to the Alloc River Cape set of grace. Use that as mine. Next sort of staging ground, but this needs a marker too. Because I haven't done this yet. We've got two dungeons located. The only other dungeon I've found, period, has been Bellurat Jail. Which I did some time ago. It was fun, but I was stupid and tried using Deflect here against the Demi-Human Swordmaster boss at the end, which was rather dumb of me, I would say. It just was not a very good idea. So... Because it's a really, really fast attacking enemy, which meant that I was not able to get the reliable hits of... Well, reliable Deflects and therefore guard counters I wanted, because even if I'd get a guard, it would... Oftentimes, dodge the guard counter. It It's a fun way to try to get Sekiro-style combat in Elden Ring. Say that as someone who really enjoyed Sekiro, kind of similarly to how Melania's Great Rune, and to an extent, Melania's own health drain mechanic is a way to emulate Bloodborne to an extent. But it's still retrofitting another game's mechanics onto a different game that was not made to fit it. Okay, and oh my, I thought I would be able to get the... Repulse off and stop you. Well, we tried. Okay. Can I... That said, it's... We've got enough durability that even taking those hits is not a significant problem for me. It's not something I'm seriously worried about. So... Keep working our way down here, under this big other ledge, which is just this sort of high road that I could have taken, but we'll do that later. To this, which this should be a mausoleum, I presume. But of course, I won't know for sure until I actually get there and see it with my own eyes, or of course, console the wiki like a scrub. Hmm. Lots of Mirandas, they're weak to fire, but they're also weak to slashing, so... Backhand it is. 
said, I think I got a really good level of immunizing horn charm in here. By the way, I can avoid poison entirely by just letting torrent carry me through. That is true as well. Alright. And maybe the way I want to do this is dismount to attack them. But of course, it's not as if I really have to be attacking. It's more just... If something is actively hostile, I can lock onto it and it shows a health bar when I lock onto it. It will not escape my sight. I will show absolutely no mercy to the enemies of this world. None whatsoever. Come on. It makes sense given that you're holding... Oh, it prom was. I thought I was dual wielding when I actually was not. It's kind of hard to see. This is given that you hold it in reverse grip. I'm not paying all that close attention. It's actually easier than I would like to mix up the staff with the blade of the reverse grip sword. But there are actually only three reverse grip swords. This is the only one that's even infusible. It's real good. Especially since that does mean I can put quality infusion on it for really good damage with a stupid equal stats non-build I have. It's, I, I would never even call it a build. The entire point of it is literally not having to make a build. It is the manifestation of my own indecision, which is why I don't even call it a challenge run anymore. It's legitimately just the way I like to play the game. A oh, festive grease, and oh, it's an old flower field. That's cute. Coats Armin, grinding wielder, trace amount of runes on lightning attacks, and also adds a little bit of fizz damage. Solidified not grease, made from mixture of bone shards, craftable item. And this is basically like the windmill village people from Dolmanula and the human bone weapons that they drop sometimes. Coats Armin, imparting a festive incantation that grants the wielder a scant few runes on lightning attacks. The effect lasts only for a short time. The delightful festival is an old tradition. Yet delightful. When old enough for the urge to tacitly, silently tolerate its endurance. Hmm. Cool trees down there. I wonder what that's going to be when I get to that spot. I think that might be the Abyssal Woods. And therefore, frenzied flame stuff, but I can't even get to Cerulean Coast from the areas I've seen so far. It's right down here, basically, but this drop is too far, and even this coffin, which looks like you would be able to maybe drop down to it, because they don't have a lot of topographic markings here, is a comically far distance down. I do like, in the long run, how the lack of something like a glider climbing forces real serious engagement with the environment that... A lot of open world games don't have, and I say that is an unironic Genshin fan. God forgive me. It... You can go to a lot of places whenever you feel like it, but not everywhere. And to get to a lot of places, you have to take a road that is deliberately, definitionally more difficult than the other paths. It... And that is my personal problem with... Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, and one that other people have echoed. In other words, a sh criticism that I shamelessly echoed in Soul. That, as cool as the idea of a game where you can go anywhere is, there are ways to screw it up, and one of the ways to screw it up is kind of what Breath of the Wild did, which was adding very, very strict... Well, actually, strict might be the wrong word, adding... Actually, I would say generous level scaling. So there's a level system in Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom that is completely obscured from the character. But basically, there's a hidden EXP value that goes up the more enemies you kill. It goes up real high when you kill bosses and makes enemies and their weapons drop stronger. But the big thing about it is it means that other than looking different and having different elements, I suppose... There's no one of the four starting quests that is all that much harder than the others. Some are a little easier, but it's not as if one is deliberately balanced for later to encourage you to either go over a certain progression route or choose something more difficult for the sake of an additional challenge and maybe getting a bit stronger faster. 
But Elden Ring is basically the opposite, and I like that. Though, to be fair, I think... K Kaled is the most obvious example if you're trying to talk about, okay, the game is trying to encourage you to go to an area that's a bit harder first to get stronger, have an additional challenge, because there are so many things that send you to Kaled. You can walk there, get forced teleported by the transporter chest in the ruins, can take the transporter rune ring in a little bit south of the village, and oh, very red over there in Jagged Peak. I do wonder how I'll get there. But they try real hard to basically send you there. But Kaled is still basically, depending on whether you count Weeping Peninsula as a separate area from Limgrave, the second or third, the third or fourth area, quote unquote, in the game in terms of progression. That Altus is still harder. And it's definitely a bit of a departure. And to be fair, I'm talking about South Kaled because Dragon Bear was legitimately kind of endgame level. And I guess that does lend some credence given that a lot of people do like the idea of going to Dragon Bear early to get a cheap kill on Grail using probably something like bleed weapons and just getting a bunch of runes that are for that point in the game. If you go there early, really, really nice. But it's not exactly the same as going straight to endgame. And neither is Breath of the Wild, really, because one, there is still scaling, even though Hyrule Castle is still deliberately a bit more difficult, but it still has its own scaling system. It's not at max difficulty immediately, which means you just stay, if you go there early, it's not going to be as hard as if you went there having beaten everything else in the game. Shadow Moor Shulman Greaves. Better place in the room to shadow them for such an honor. We can't some of the other ones already. But, as I was saying, it is a really interesting idea to be able to go to... And if there's some of it is just that Breath of the Wild is not an incredibly hard game to begin with. But it feels a bit deceptive. Talk about being able to go anywhere, even endgame, whenever you like, including from the very start of the game. Which is what I did in both Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, because I can never hold myself back. But... We sorcerer I've got equipped. That's right. <laughs> but it feels like a bit of a broken promise when there's a bit less difficulty in that than you might expect. To be fair, what I really did like about Tears of the Kingdom is that the final boss rush is really, really hard if you go there early. Because not only are there just more bosses to fight, but there's another encounter which, if you play through the storyline, there are people to help you out, and thus, if you don't play through the storyline, and I didn't, and still haven't, you have to fight a huge army of mobs by yourself, which is actually legitimately difficult if you are doing it right at the start of the game. Though more in the sense of being a research management puzzle than just a pure skill check. Though that is also true. Mm -hmm. It... In terms of the difficulty of the sort of... Theoretical maximum challenge in the game. Which in both really is just... Going to end game at start game. Tears of the Kingdom has a bit more... And that also just makes me sad that there's no way to restore it to the original state. If you do the main quest and fight the four main bosses in their original context... Okay, can regular Miranda Flowers dodge, or just, is it just the ones here? I don't know. But, as I was saying, there's no way to bring that boss rush back. If you play through the story, you're gonna get people helping you with that horde fight, and then individually taking on every one of the normal bosses, there's no way to get that back. Which is deliberate, but 
Wait, can I see? Uh, so quality, but oh right, because this is blind spot. This isn't the part, eh? Okay, I can eventually poise break you. I think. Come on. This deals an okay amount of poison damage. I wonder where it's regen is like. Okay, that did it. Decently weak to slash, so. Oh, I guess it's just spamming. Okay. What I should have done was put on Blood, Hang Blood Fang Blade, honestly. Oh well. I mean, Blood, Fl Blood Flame. Blood Fang. Mixing things up with Bloodhound's Fang. Okay. So. Let us simply proceed. But. I really did enjoy my time with Tears of the Kingdom. In no small part, because my time was rushing straight to Hyrule Castle as soon as I did the intro quest, which prevents you from doing more of Hyrule Castle. Doing as much as I could with what I had, because I couldn't get up in the sky to the floating portion at all. But I could thoroughly explore ground level with no issue. So I did that, found the one little secret tunnel dungeon, be that thing. And got some slightly better armor, and then I just went through the big gloom cavern below. And fought six bosses after a horde fight, and then Ganondorf. And it was fun. It was real cool. But it's different. Then it would be to, one, go through the entire game and just... Have the fight as a culmination, which, to be fair, and I don't mean this as a boast, because I kind of wish it wasn't true, but it wouldn't pose enough of a challenge to be all that interesting to me, beyond the level of just, okay, it's finally over, which is not really the kind of way you want to feel about a game, honestly. Maybe, I don't know. If there's any time you should feel it's finally over about a game, it's when it's or is in be fine with the game ending on it, suppose, which is a different emotion anyway. It's when the game is ending, but... Where's the spirits room gonna send me? I bet that'd be to Shadow Altus. So I probably don't actually want to go there. At the moment. Come on, come on, and... Okay. You don't seem to be falling off, and that's a 4 to a foot. Nice. But if I approach Shadow Keep, a bunch of quest lines would just all break. So do not want to do that. So, north and then try attacking north is up there for that spirit spring. So there's a pile of spectral rocks blocking it. Apparently, you can actually use Margit's shackle to break those. It's basically a speedrun tactic. I want to do things in more or less the intended order, so nah. Well, that's... Interesting, I didn't think it would alert them like that. Oh well. But I wonder what I will see if I break that spirit spring open and ride it up. Because if, if it takes me to Shadow Altus, I can still just go back. Okay, so it's that thing. Without going to Shadow Keep and therefore triggering the big switch, so to speak. There we are, and now it's a real spirit spring. Somewhere a spirit spring has been unsealed. Yeah, I wonder where. No points for guessing. So... But... And li like I was saying before, other people have talked about the idea that... have said and agreed that, again, another idea I stole. Another opinion I stole. That not having a way to bring back the big boss rush at the end of Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, they did that twice. Both having a boss rush to get smaller the more you play the game is a way to sort of have it be harder. Though I... I think to an extent... Nintendo... It's probably a mindset thing and not really understanding all that well the idea of difficulty as a reward, so to speak. A challenge as a reward. Hefty poison pot. I got any kind of dis interesting description? No. Okay. But what would be really cool is if you had the option. So the option 
of making that final boss rush even harder. If you... Is that a painting I saw, or... Wait. Let's look at info. Information. Paintings. Swimsuit of Red Main Musil and Zero. Incursion. Sacred Tower. But... That does not seem to be a... Okay, we can just talk to you then, right? You're not a painting guy at all. Obey all talent direct your wounds yet ache. Okay, I skipped too late and skipped over more dialogue. Is your fury still yet to crest its zenith? Hurry, hurry, and lay it all to waste. My waste to the proud that conceded each every last one of that arrogant lot. Presumably referring to the ancient dragons? Elder's hovel. Oh, talisman of the dread. Oh, it's right there. It's potency of magma. A talisman depicting the dread dragon and the jagged peak. That's Bale. His horrors cause the peak's molten fury to boil and churn. Raises potency of magma. Bale was the foul dragon's name, a terrible harbinger of destruction whose challenge to the ancient dragon war, that is, Placidus Axe, ended in grievous mutual injury. Nice! That would be good on... I think that affects Plasmus Blade? I think? Maybe. I... I feel like there's something messing up my stealth here. Maybe. Either way, before I go up that spirit spring, I would honestly say I'd like to go down, tap into Alat Cave first. Make sure I get everything on that route. There were some crabs and other things I skipped on the way, so... Though, to be fair... It's bludgeoning and... Bloodfiend's arm is still not leveled. <laughs> well, I guess I could just use... Giant Crusher. One more time. Give it one last round before I basically phase the thing out. Yeah, that would be nice of me. Being nice to my weapons. I'm losing it. So suppose, yeah, it's... It will soon be time for crab. But... I like this weapon. I like these backhand blades a lot. Pot is fun, too. If I had explored more around the encampment, I probably could have found it before fighting. Oh. Sacred Lion, which could have been an interesting idea, interesting way to handle it. Maybe. Okay. Shadow Militiamen are going to go down pretty easy to lead to the slashing, I think. Then there are crabs over here. Let's keep tapping that. Lock on button. Make sure that everyone here is someone I find. And, okay, those are just animals. Let's let s resting deer lie. I'm gonna say sleeping, but they're not even sleeping. Just running around a little. Okay. Then I think we could get one catacombs done. Depending on the time it takes, because Runeforge lava intake is actually... Doesn't even have a boss. Oh, come on. I, oh, okay. More of you than I expected. Come on. I sh might actually like to dodge. Go unlocked for this. It's a group fight, so. There we go. It's a group fight and they're small. So if I don't lock on, it probably increases the possibility of me being able to hit multiple of them. The single attack, which would help things significantly. Hmm. So that's over to Alak. wonder what else is around here. Maybe a dungeon or two or three. Probably not. Put on our hammer. Take off. It's still heavy load. Okay. I... That's got Lion's Claw on it. I don't want to let anything go to chance. Let's just buff up entirely. Okay. Thank you. Hello. And slam. I dodge. Okay. I was too close. Okay. Well, that was nice. I wonder what fiend's arm would have been even better. 
Though to be fair, I, that would be a charge heavy instead of a line spell, probably. Because one has much better. It's only on the fully charged heavy that you get that crazy high bleed AoE. Okay. Make this happen. Take down all these Mirandas, thankfully. No poison! How oh, nice. Okay. Thanks. Just keep splitting you open. And. That. No. Nice! That did it. And can I. That will hook me around pretty well. Where is my bleed? Where's my bleed? I. Okay. Come on. Bleed, you stupid plant. Okay, there we go. And it. Lost a bunch of chlorophyll from that. I really do like how they have different colored bleed effects. For things that have different colored blood. Or different colored things that work like blood but aren't. Poison bloom. Okay. Anything else in this area? Who knows? Okay. I think it was just that crab in this tunnel entrance. That makes sense. Oh, there are more crabs at least. We can cut them up easily enough. I don't have to worry too much about damage types for that. In fact, I don't have to worry about damage types for that at all. Okay. Thing left would be. Actually, let me see over here real quickly. Go up on this ledge, which may be something. Is this anything? No, it's nothing. Sad. Dastard ahead. Yeah. But we can always see more clearly from up here because it is not a region of that fog effect. Watch it fade back in and make things impossible to see again. Yeah, because clearly there's stuff up here, but... Wait. Can we... Let me see if we can horse our way up here. That... Uh-huh. Curiosity rewarded. Okay. That, we got bats, which means Bolt of Grant's X. Take them out. Put our bull goat back on. Vader Grease is going to be better, but I'm not going to get into a literal absolute endgame, which is annoying. Thank you. And it wasn't even close. Goodbye. Mm -mm. Ooh, what else is in here? Should charge it up for a nice long range snipe. Goodbye. It. Fextra Life comments, which again, say what you will about Fextra Life, compared that thing a while back to the game's one sniper rifle, basically. Just crazy long range, great damage, very precise. It's real good for what you want it to do. Oh, it's real good at fulfilling its one specific purpose. Intended purpose might be a bit strong, but... Pretty sure that, like normal lightning spirits, something that dodgy enemies don't dodge for whatever reason. Which is nice, too. See, this is... It's a Shadow Realm rune. Can I get any higher up from here? I... This might be tough. I hmm. get the feeling that I could if I was very, very precise with it. But the question is whether the endeavor would be worth it. This does not look like a possible situation here. Oh, but that said, I imagine I can just drop down here from there. And that's meant to be another way to get to that tunnel by Alec River. Okay. That's what I get for my silly approach. Guess we should put back hands back on now. Put back hands back hand now. Okay. Well then. What a long time. We got that one spirit spring. Other than that, I. Not much. One dungeon, and I think it'd be Fog Rift, because. Fog Rift will be a bit longer than Ruined Forge, but nothing wrong with going slightly over time. I do want to get a bit more sleep tonight, but 
Going for five or ten minutes more is not going to kill me. Okay. We got this stuff. Don't remember what it is, but I got it. Go up here. Find that side of grace again. This is around where we got more spirit refined. Revered, revered spirit ashes. I think if that was the. Yep, that's the altar with the dead horn scent. So there's our side of grace, which means. I just want to go back to. That spirit spring and see if it takes me anywhere notable with anything of note. Might mean. Muscle maybe? If it's a muscle aim, there's something to fight in there. Good chance that that's actually the last thing I do today. Depending on who's in there and how long it takes me to kill them. As in whether they get a kill on me or not. Which might actually mean doing a bit of runor grinding. Maybe. Okay. But. We basically demarcated the area we've gone through. It's basically bordered by sites of grace functionally now gone to a side of grace in basically every direction we would want to go which means there's no worry that resting which I don't even have to do I've got full flasks would respawn enemies who I prefer not to have been respawned go to our spirit spring over there write it up see what's there okay So, okay, that goes up way high. Honestly, what is this? I'm pretty sure, again, this takes you to Shadow Altus, but don't want to get too close. Is that an item down there, or that looks like a message? Could be a jagged peak. Hmm. It's also all this down here. We need more light. Let's fix that problem. Thank you. This seems to be empty. Hmm. So be it. God ahead. What could they mean by that? By the way, it. There's nothing here. So I suppose we'll just ride the other spirit spring from this empty portion of cliffside. There we are, and yep, that's Shadow Altus. Fort of Reprimand, okay. Oh wow. I... That's interesting. But... <laughs> I'm the Fort of Reprimand. Don't really want to get too close. Don't think it would be all that wise. Uh, back down there from here. It's not a drop I can live. If I went the other way, I could make it. Honestly, I want to ride back up. Hit that again. Try to see what that golden item over there is. It looks somewhat promising. Then, and then at that point, I'll do one dungeon. It is interesting though, because that means that I've only fought one boss, and that's a death knight. It. I generally would like to beat three or four bosses. Per session, but if I'm just going around, it's not as possible. Last time I beat a lot of things. Beat a an invader, I beat the dancing lion, I beat a tree spirit, and a non-responding horde sent warrior, that would be fair. Which one of those would be counted as bosses is I suppose a bit up to interpretation. Oh, and a Ghost Slim Dragon and the Demi Human Swords Master. Good amount of things around point. I think it was.
terms of things with health bars, I think that was exactly four. So in that case, we will add that up. We'll go through Fog Rift. And I think that'll be a comfortable amount of progress to make for tonight. I also don't think Fog Rift will take all that long either, so should be good. Alright. Jump up. Jump up this one again, but go to the right instead of going to the fort. As long as you're in a jump mode, you can change your direction about as much as you like. And here we are. And this is... Oh, a blessing of America. It's pretty fun. But... I really don't want to be around here right now. Before you hit me up, let's teleport. Before you see me. Though to be fair, now that I've got a better lightning spear. Though in the end I would imagine that lightning knight's lightning spear would be my best option altogether. Don't need that much. Let me just see real quick. Fog Rift Catacombs. Enemies, imps, inquisitors, black knights, big mouth imps, desert soldiers, putrescent sorcerers. Weak to... Probably holy? Who knows? Inquisitors are weak to... Slashing, I would presume. They're doing widow with just horn scent. But, I think... That's right, I can't teleport out of here. It would be nice if being at this side of grace would allow you to just teleport out, but... I can't even ask for that much. I think... I'll level up the Blood Fiend's arm now. That shouldn't be too bad. So I want a new bludgeoning weapon, a new strike weapon. Don't have access to unarmed yet. Nothing really new from DLC yet other than Blood, Vein Blood Fiends. And Blood Fiends would also just be good. If I found out something that I really wanted to cheese using. Believe that was already at least a little weak to strike, maybe? I know people used to use it on the final boss, before it got nerfed, though. Because it did get nerfed pretty meaningfully. The little projectiles that it spits out on a fully charged heavy. Their application of status became nerfed into the ground. Which... It's important to ensure that things aren't just real instant win buttons, but I don't know. It's fun to have a little bit of cheese every now and then. It's tasty, at least. So we can upgrade that Blood Fiend's arm. Finally give Giant Crusher a rest. Again, I probably want to put Crag Blade on. People have put Lion's Claw on. Blood, Blood Fiend's Arm, and it's okay-ish, but what I've really seen is Crag Blade, which increases damage and stance damage. Especially since the best way to attack with it isn't using any of the skills, but just the fully charged heavy. So, time to make this thing strong. Not a decent amount of arcane buildup, but it's just on the physical for now. Well, I, I would imagine it applies to the Hidden bleed buildup that you only get with the fully charged heavy that you don't really see, quote unquote. Ashes of War, put that on the arm. Nice. That. It's gonna be around 8,000 something, 100 something. This is a bit less, but it's lighter and it's for bleed, for sure. But of course you just bleed on it, which less damage, not all that much damage. Not well not all that much less and less and hilarious amounts of blood lost build up and that 172 applies to every little projectile on its charge heavy, which makes it pretty ridiculous if you know what you're doing. I don't know if I know what I'm doing, but we can hope. So 
We're more or less chill now. How oh, heavy that... That is heavy load. I would like to see how much bleed built up that deals. Honest to goodness, maybe I go through this dungeon with just this. Kragoid's there, and now with the rocks on it, it actually looks a bit more like an axe. Honestly, that one of the least ugly Kragoid looks. Because it kind of just looks like covering... It, it's just covering your weapon in rocks. <laughs> it's really all there is to it. When you move around, you can kind of see the dust fly out, which is fun. Oh, goodness. So that's at medium load now. Some other imps in here. Oh, well. Hi. Oh, all right. Can I... Oh, my... All right. Huh. And that did not bleed you, I presume, but it's not bad damage. I put that blessing of the Urchery on. The damage alone is probably enough, and it's... I think a little faster than Giant Crusher 2, I would say. Let's check the Illusory Walls real quick. Illusory Walls and Elden Ring. There is... Wait. Okay, nothing here yet. A few Orser walls, but they're all... Distance away. And oh, okay. Just the damage there was actually pretty negligible. I need to run all the way across. Okay. Oh, there, Imp. Oh, well. Oh, well. You know, that'll do it. Get over here. Mmm, that didn't hit you. Okay. There we are. Mm. Is there another crusher up there? Or? I don't know. Oh, well. Mm. <sighs> Definitely seems like a bit more of an anti-boss weapon, but... Should be okay. Oh, well. Okay, it doesn't seem like I can get on top of that. At least not right now. Okay. There then. There's that sorcerer. I... could try this on him. Depending... on whether I can get up there in a timely manner. Oh, there. I... Slam and I... How'd I miss that? Stupid. How'd I miss that? Whatever. At least the imps are not hard to stun lock if you know what you're doing. Another yellow Fulgur Bloom. Okay, and they're interesting death sorceries. Message and then explosion. Oh, well, alright. And that's the Big Mouth Imp. Okay. Wait for that, and dodge out of the way. Still get on top. Oh, look, another. One, two. The spitty ones. Hmm. Hear one of you there. I. It's got a light back on. Thank you. Thank you, that didn't aggro. Wouldn't make much sense if it did. Nice. Decent damage for that. I guess the question is where do I find more Shadow Tree fragments? Ancient Dragon Knight's cookbook. Hmm. Record of crafting techniques of the ancient Dragon Knight who followed Goblin's Golden Knights in the Realm of Shadow. Acquired the knowledge to craft the following. How many of those ancient Dragon Knight cookbooks do I have? Okay, that's Greater Potentate. Right. Item crafting. Red Lightning Thought. That. Can I make that even? Can't. Red Fulgur Boom. Don't have access to that yet. What lightning damage that links nearby enemies? The ancient dragons who betray the world side with side of a tyrant, betrayed Presidious Axe side of Bale, were known for wielding branching red lightning. Which is not something we can get as a spell, which is interesting. You would imagine you'd be able to do that, maybe. Hmm. Huh. Okay. 
So there's an item down there, but very point I'm going to need to ride that up somehow. Come on, come on. So this is way back, but also Goodbye. Just barely falls short of the kill. That's sad. Can't use this ladder. Hmm. What's down there? Yo, the way you do it, do a dungeon in games like these is always go down all the side paths and weave the objective for last. It's gonna wait around forever. It's not time sensitive. You don't have to go back if you've already gotten the treasure. You don't have to go back for treasure if you have the treasure. It's gonna be time for revenge. Or... Let me see. Or wait, am I even in the right spot? Is this one that whoops around? Oh, okay, you just went over there by your own accord. Okay, cool. I charge it up. Hit, just for fun. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, got back there, got some balloons. Which is okay, I suppose. Mm hmm There's an item down there. But again, that doesn't tell me all that much. Oh, big mouth imp. Oh well. Strafe that. Charge. Hit. Thank you. Cool. Oh, me too. More of that not resin. But it definitely looks like it is resin. And... That's just a drop down and getting there easier, it seems. We've got a catacomb sorcerer. Oh, there. Presumably you can actually bleed. Which is nice. I... Oh, okay. And... Yep. That's a lot of bleed. That's a lot of bleed rocking. Get a bit more light in here. It's up top. If this is the way to the boss, or maybe not. It's the way to you. God from before. Let's sneak up on you. Take out the charge heavy. Hi! And... I don't even know if blood was procked there. Whatever. And where are we now? We've got Mesmer soldiers. Hello. How about you get over here? Is that Mesmer Knight or? Okay. Come on. Ooh, and the blood got you in part. That's nice. Hi. Oh, I thought I'd have more poise. There we are. Good bleed. Okay. That is where we started. Another knight over there. I would bet this is the way to the boss, maybe. Stick up on you and... Okay. Luckily, you didn't alert your friend, so... Come around this way. Slam! Goodbye. Okay. Get that back up. And sneak up and hope that Bleed will save me. I wonder what you're guarding. Oh, okay. Oh my goodness. Alright. Well, there's something of real value there, it seems. I... Okay, that's a big gold breaker. Can I... Nice. Oh. Uh. Duh. Dodge! Oh, what? No, no. I heal, heal. Okay, this. Not a boss killer weapon. Or. Well. In general. That was Grand Sack Spotter. I shouldn't have gotten silly. Great Ghost Glove War. Well, okay. Oh, and presumably going up that ladder path might have. Well, the other route might have eventually led me there. And therefore to being able to do that with a drop down or just sniping him with lightning. Well, it, there will be more Mesmer soldiers in the future. It's alright. So, all there is to do then is... Go back on the funny death elevator. Go underneath. Grab the item and some such. And try my best. Thank you. 
Let him over there, but if I stop to get it now, I'm probably gonna get crushed. Good bait. Night. New Dragon Bolt Grease. Heavy Lightning Damage said it once been a favorite tool of the Dragon Cult Knights who once served the Prince of Gold. Good for them, I suppose. Uh, says that elevator go up, down, or all around. Let's check. It's there. That. This clearly goes down then. Okay. Wonder what would happen if I sent it back up without me though. Didn't see much down there, but it's an idea. Stick America here. But. One thing I saw. That. This is not one of the secret lower level. Fair enough. These catacombs are longer than I expected, though. Oh, well, that's a bad thing. So, how? They seem weirdly stronger. Direct weapon at versus hit versus not ends. Maybe you can believe them. I don't- I wouldn't imagine you could, but... Everything can change. Come on. Okay. I- uh, I- Oh, alright. Hmm. It's a bit intimidating. I'd expect fire imps. I- Need to just be using... Normal attacks on them. I don't need to be stupid with it. Jump. Hit. Nice. Especially since a jumping heavy unambiguously stuns them. Yep. Okay. But I took that fire in a way I wouldn't have liked to. Yellow Fulgur Bloom. Rot of Fruit. We have that already. It's not new. Okay. That... Another catacomb sorcerer. What else is around here? I okay. Got a bit of ricochet, which is cool. Huh. Well, all right. Oh, I okay. Interesting. Charge it up fully, and I. Ooh, that even hit you. Good AOE on that. I am liking this weapon more and more. Grab glove or whatever. Let us continue on our intended path. Oh, Fulger Bloom. Just surprises me that there doesn't seem to be a... Nice... Stopping point anywhere for... Checkpoint anywhere for... Or shortcut to the boss when it shows up. Oh, please. It's there. Let me get in here. I- oh, well... A hole. That's sad. It's clearly a hidden path, too. Glass shard. It's an interesting place. And again, a bit bigger than I expected it to be. Hmm. Hello, hello. Alright. And- no- what? Huh? Another? I didn't see you. They stacked somehow, or...? What gives? Okay. Let's charge us up fully. Goodbye. Enjoy the bleed and enjoy death. Oh, you can ride that up. It's an indentation. That's cool. Okay, there was just one in the corner. Okay. When are you gonna stop using that attack? Well, you can anti-aerial. That's fine. This is... Shadow Realm Rune 3. Okay. Soldiers who joined the Crusade were rewarded with the grace of plenty. Faith required ahead. Ooh, okay. So you need to time that jump. With a good amount of... Silliness. Let's go over here. That hit me, it won't hit... Oh, okay. We need to jump into that compartment. Well, that's cool. It's a very interesting idea. There we are. Let's ride this up to whatever this is. And with that, well, that also lets me get across there. 
This is... Ashaboard Blinkbolt. Ah. Skill used by the Golden Knights who serve Godwin from below stands the body is transformed into a bolt of lightning and charge straight over for it. Head at Fulgurus, Thunderous Speed. Okay. So let me get across here. A couple of other things around that I'd like to check out, but it's a big one. Aha, uh -huh, so some kind of talisman. Oh, this an altar, the stone sheathed sword. It's the only precious item. A sword that none can pull from its scabbard of cracked stone, a relic of a lost civilization from a time long past, said to have served a ritual purpose at altars of light and darkness. Square off. Turn that into swords of light and darkness, eventually. It's gonna lead down to other spots or that hole, beware of ambush. Okay, cool. Hi! And I, oh my goodness, that's not great. I really, I hate you. What in the? Oh, come on. Okay. I. Nice hit and I. Oh my lord. Can I? Okay. Dodge, dodge. Can I? Hit and we killed one of them, did we? I think we killed one of them. Ah, oh, we're running out. We need a shortcut for that fight. Oh come on. One. Two, okay. Hmm. Can't imagine that the intake ruins would... Intake would take as much. This probably drops you down to the other hole. Maybe. Where is this? Or... Oh, it's just back here. Send down there and also another hole. Go down the other hole. Jumping off for part ahead and short seek incantation. Okay. Oh. Is it always underground too? I don't know, you tell me. So, another sorcery here. Let that wall do the job for us. And huh? Alright. That was strange. Let's bleed you. Now that's a great option. But, of course, we're running to the issue that bleed. Raz is rising, but there we go. The squad wart, because normally you'd want to use fire or something on there. I don't have any fire spells equipped, though I guess I could use... Lightning or something like that is a less than ideal alternative. Let's just see how well Bolt of Grand Sex does against them. So there are weapons with innate fire damage in the DLC, which could be nice, but... No, fire would be ideal, but... You know, let's try this. Haven't upgraded at all, but... Hmm. It's really close range. Yeah, Bloodhounds is actually still better. To be able to... proc that bleed... with relative ease. Nice. Put our blessing back on. And maybe I should get Black Flame in here instead of various defensive buffs that I don't even use as much as I should, but eh, I'll live. Eventually I will be able to get various weapons with innate elemental damage that I'll get nice pleasant use out of, so I'm not crying too hard. Come on. Rib up, therefore, be wary of rushing in. Oh, hi. Huh. Ricochet. That. Oh, is it just your teleports or. What's the thing there? I. Oh, well, I. Oh, my goodness. This is not good. That's the last one. What I probably should have done is. Bearer of gold. It's not too late. Okay. Yeah, it. I can have those up for basically free, so there's no reason not to, and that helps. Okay. Cool. Okay. Well, we need more Starlight. Come on. How many slimes are in here? No oh, Fulgur Bloom. Ooh, uh. Hit. Hmm. Charge it up right. Good kill. Okay. Thank you. I 
It's feeling a bit longer than I expected. It's not a bad thing, but it is what it is. One more should do it. The charge is up and far away enough. Just bleed them down. Oh, electro charge. Well, it's terrible, but it calls down lightning to charge a body with electricity. With the incantations, the capital zinc dragon cult calls down lightning to charge the caster's body while charge electric shocks will strike the area several times. Charge increases potency. The origin of incantations that bolster the body with lightning. Now a lost art in the land between. Huh. Nothing more up top. Oh, there's one more slime. Hi there. Slam. One more. There we are. To be fair, I think they definitely nerfed the application on the AoE a little. So before, I think it would have been truly, truly ridiculous. As in, one single would trigger... Well, the first one was already triggering, I presume, multiple bleed instances, I think. But originally, before before the nerf, it was hilariously overpowered. Very blatantly out of hand. So this is where we were before. An overlook on that passage, so... Go back down here. Should be, and then there's just that one passage. Yep, and this is where we need to be. Come on. Cool. Let's take the slow and steady. We don't have any health blasts or damages. A no go. Thank you. I think the death nets are undead. It would certainly make sense. Sacred blood should be. Oh, I'm stupid, stupid. I didn't mean to backstep there. Come on. That means a bit more waiting. Okay. It's the first time I've actually seen that that close up in a while. Okay. Oh, what? What? Okay. That's dirty. Don't you dare. Yeah. Okay. Run across. Get that item. Come back. Broken room. Okay. My way back up. Honestly, if we don't have much in the way of healing. Maybe Black Flame could be okay right now. Some of the healing. Yeah, it. You run out here. It's crazy. And it. No shortcut. The craziest part. It's like the beginning, too. It's funny, but. That should be the boss, I would imagine. Main thing is, the drop down into that Death Knight area is what really confuses me. So I don't know where that's from, or how I'd even find that spot. Whatever. It's probably getting up on top of one of the crushers. I can leave that for tomorrow. But then in that case, that's Sacred Black Silk Raid Hammer. Probably... Get our blessing back. Golden Vow. Probably Divine Lightning Fortification, actually. Got no healing, but alright. And there you are, Mr. Death Knight. Oh, I. Oh, Blink Bolt's not green. Okay, I. Oh, what? Luckily, we're losing most of your damage, but it. Uh, what? What? Oh, I. Okay. Dodge. Whoa, whoa, I. Good god, I need to quit out. Dodge, 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 dodge. I can't be here. Okay. Well, we didn't die. I think I want to run in. Take that guy out. I a probably want to put on something else. Main thing is gotta go all the way back through here now. That sucks. 
I would say almost makes me wish I died, but that is not true. But it's crazy how far they make you go. But given that I'm already going back, I definitely feel the urge to check and see what is in That one spot with that one Mesmer soul, Mesmer Knight. Let's see what's up with that. Can't get on top of that. Can't get on top of some of this, but I imagine that some of it has to do with getting on top of other crushers. Maybe. That Stone Sheath Sword was big, but not everything. One area, but that was it. What about it? It's a big dungeon. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, just the fact that there's nothing like a homeward bone in this game. And the fact that teleports are hard disabled in dungeons. Raises the question of, okay, what were they thinking? How were we meant to do this? But, I gotta take that death nut down. No ifs and buts about it. Said I. Death and I. Are they those who have been death? They are. Does not say. Those who live in death. Undead? Yeah, death knights are not undead for the purpose of weaknesses, which is probably a good decision balance-wise, as it means there isn't a way to just cheese them. As undead damage multipliers are pretty crazy. Ghost Swim Dragons are undead, but... Quite frankly, not much is missed by having them be cheesable. Nothing of value was lost. Okay, well, I, ladder up here. Hmm. Tough crowd. <clears throat> How do I want to do this then? want to do is find whatever is a death knight's little area so to speak we'll drop down into the death knight spot probably have to ride up on one of the let's get a bit more light in here first can't cast that with that out of mana okay I guess I need to find a way to get to the drop down. Stuff there. Just going. No, not there, not there. Never mind. Okay. It's gotta be this. Go up top, ride that back around. We've been here. No, not that. That over there, right? Right, okay. It's just oddly big. And to be fair, mountaintops of the giants and its catacombs tended to be pretty annoying in terms of how many things were in them plus how hard it was to get through, but not as bad as this. My question is, okay, we can get on top of that. That's how we're supposed to do that. Get over there. And, okay, get up. Let's see what's here. Which place? Yep. This over here is the way over that Death Knight's little area, and what can I find here? The answer is Ah, uh, Black Knight Commander Andreas. It's such a normal name. Feels out of place, honestly. 
Knight Commander of the Black Knights. The Black Knights were the primary force of Mesmer's army. Their first leader was Andreas, a man endowed with great strength and commander of the powers of the Crucible, and whose spirit in these ashes dwells. Though he remained, remained a devout part of Mesmer, after his flight from the Earth Tree, he would rebel after warning of his allegiance to serpentine nature. His righteous stand was rewarded with imprisonment in an underground tomb. Too bad for him. So that's how we were supposed to do that. That's how we got back onto the initial first crusher, which otherwise would be kind of tough. I can barely roll out of the way. What's this? Just run through, not fight things. Keep our flasks. Kill the Death Knight at the end, who is supposedly quite weak to holy damage. Okay, and... Alright. Thanks. Okay, I... Oh! Well, that killed you. Nice. Gotta take a few out to get through, but... Not a major focus, of course. Fair glove war. Run past a bit, and well, there you are. This is actually a good option. Maybe even better than blood fiends. Because again, I cannot imagine that these things are all that bleedable. Oh, well, you know, you never know. Okay, I'm annoying. We are just here to make a mad dash. I'm not trying to clear everything out another time. Well, we went the wrong way. I oh, please. Stupid amp. What? What? Okay. Please, please. I hate you. Legitimately hate you. Come on. That's why you're going the wrong way, I guess. Okay. And of course they're all coming the Hate you, hate you. Okay. Came down to hit me better, but it Hmm. My my attempts are rewarded with getting stuck in a corridor behind a bunch of imps. This probably should not have surprised me. Come on. Go over here. One. Two. We got hit by some of the splash damage, I think. Who knows? Uh, one. Two. Three. Okay. It is a little bit less, you know, colossal versus standard hammer, but still. Gotta go down here. That's how we do it. Thanks. I'm done, and turn around a bit so we don't get crush crush. Thank you. Otherwise we couldn't make it there in time. Here we are. Let's go down. This will be the way to that death night and if we have good Oh goodness. If I've got my flasks up, I've got my buffs up. It shouldn't be all that much trouble. Emphasis on shouldn't be. You never know with these things. Hello. Oh, goodness. Crush and... Oh, okay. Your shrapnel's coming up. Hard and fast. I, okay. One, two, three, four. Thank you for crushing that guy. Okay. Bye. Barely through there. One more here. Don't have to aggro those other guys. And there we are. This should be the way through if we're just running. But we still don't have a, an actual shortcut. And that still irks me. Take the elevator. Fight the Death Knight. That'll be all. Again, things did run long. Which is not necessarily a horrible thing, but it did. What I gotta do is buff up. Thank you. Blessing of the Earth Tree. Golden Vow. Lightning Fortification. And I guess we'll take that back. Okay. Honestly, Sacred Blade spam might actually be better. Maybe? I, oh, okay. Dodge, 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 dodge. Okay, I cannot slam. Damage is 
good. It's a bit different, which is cool. And I, I missed. I missed. Okay. Oh, come on. You went under somehow through pure dumb luck. Dodge, dodge, dodge. Oh, come on. I, oh, you. Oh, okay. We got lining for it, but still, I. I oh, it's still out of that. I, Blink Bulb is nasty. I'm just overextending myself by running out of stamina. Can I dodge up. Okay. Dodge. And. Ooh, another? Alright. Dodge. Ooh, I. I ooh. Okay, that's an attack. I'm definitely supposed to jump over. Okay. Ugh. Oh. Hmm. This is legitimately evil. And now my controller is vibrating uncontrollably. Nice. Dodge, I... Okay. Can I... Oh, all right. What is... No, actually, what's going on here? Dodge. Dodge. I... Oh, what? Huh? Now, I legitimately do not understand what's going on here. Well, I can keep... There we go. We got our stance break. Is this going to be it? Not quite. Charge up. One hit. And one more. Boys through that, and there we go. That was... Surprisingly difficult. Death Knight's Twin Axes. Crimson Amber Medallion plus three, which is really nice looking. That's cute. It's an Amber Medallion. A Medallion of Crimson Amber inla on an Inlay to boost maximum HP by the utmost. Your tree's old sap becomes Amber. Treasure the most precious jewels in the Godfrey the First Elven Lord. These medallions of the largest variety were conferred to Godwin's inner circle of distinguished golden knights. Golden war axes of the Death Knight. A pair of weapons made to be wielded in both hands. Crackles of the lightning, the power of the capitals, a dragon cult. The knight, once the personal guard of Godwin, was also the protector of the Prince of Death's cadaver surrogate. Which, didn't really pay attention to it during the fight, but you can see. Big Godwin face, like the one under Storm Veil, oh, and the one deeper Root right there. The cadaver surrogate. The Excult Blink Bolt Twin Axe. From a low stance, the body is transformed into a bolt of lightning, charges straight ahead at full growth speed. It's a better version of the Blink Bolt we got a bit earlier. Strong attack performs a lightning charge spinning slash. And this is fun as a sort of kamikaze option for PvP too. This... You can't infuse it in the way you can with the hammer to give it a holy focus split. And to be fair, it's not as if lightning damage is often useful enough that you'd really want something that's just a weapon that usually most of deals lightning. It still would be fun though. Because this is a somber weapon is evidenced by having a totally unique skill. Strong attack, lightning charge, spinning slash. It is a cool one. You can kind of ch chain it, not really. The cool thing is, independent direction, which the boss doesn't use. If the boss used that, I would cry. These are interesting. Don't think I'll really be using them, though. So, we'll return to the entrance. Next thing is going to be the forge, I suppose. There isn't really any real round table hold equivalent, so I think I might just log out by Freya. It's an idea. But we're done with that dungeon, which took a lot longer than I expected. Forge Love intake is actually pretty short, to my knowledge. I'll probably end up eating my words. I need that there. I need that. Places I've been. Still want to keep the Grandum marked. Artist Shack, been there tower that I might be able to get under and up eventually. Still gonna keep that marked, but we'll go back to Freya and log out there. And I guess tomorrow it's more stuff in Gravesite and then maybe Castle Ensis? Because it's one more dungeon, the stuff over here in the river, which terminates around here. It, though to be fair, this took me a lot longer than I expected. There was a lot of stuff on that map there. I guess I could just say tomorrow will be a couple more dungeons and then probably Castle Ensis. That's a decently safe bet. But we will, of course, play it by ear. So thank you to everyone who came and watched. 
went a bit longer than I expected again and you can see my face through there didn't you think about that but yeah another good Elden Ring Santa Ragon.